Terry has just completed his warm-ups. He's headed for the Yankee dugout while Jack Sanford continues to throw, and right now he's wrapping that big right hand around an overhanded curveball, which he will, he will rely on this afternoon. Once again, the weather, which, of course, was the big talk out here yesterday. The weather is just beautiful out here. A bright sun is shining. The Yankees are taking the field. This series is all tied up. The Yankees won the first game, 6-2. to two. The Giants won the second game, 2 to nothing. The Yankees won the third game, 3-2. to two. The Giants won the fourth game, 7-3. to three. And uh, right now we have a ball-tossing ceremony. Hall of Famer Bill Dickey, the Yankee great, is alongside the Yankee dugout, and Dickey will throw out the first ball. Bill Dickey, great catches of all time, a great Yankee, Hall of Famer. And all the boys out watching him, Bill who used to be coach for these Yankees, he's got a tremendous hand. Bill Dickey, all poised, and he throws a strike out to Elson Howard, and Howard, as is the custom, returns to baseball, shakes hands with the great Hall of Famer Bill Dickey, and heads back to warm up Ralph Terry. George is much a part of the conversation around that batting cage as anything was certainly the great weather we're having here this afternoon. Terrific, Joe. Even as late as last night, around 10 o'clock, the weatherman was not too sure we'd have a good day, but it has turned out to be a wonderful afternoon. A bright, sunshiny afternoon here at Yankee Stadium. As you said, a few, uh, few clouds floating by, but that'll help the infielders and outfielders on these high fly balls. Well, we're ready to go. Chuck Hiller, the second baseman, steps in. A left-handed batter against the right-hander, Ralph Terry. Chuck's batting average at 267. Here's the first pitch of the game. It's outside. One ball and no strike. Chuck has four home runs in 15 trips to the plate. He has one home run, and that was a grand slam homer. Here's the 1-0 and pitch. He swings and misses. Chuck tried to check it on a high fastball, but he'd gone too far. One ball, one strike. Boyer at third base is playing right on top of him. He's ready for the bunt. Everybody else on the infield is back. There's the 1-1 pitch. Curveball. He fouls it off. This one's going back in the upper deck. Players didn't feel like the background would be too bad today because there would be more dark coats and sweaters and not as many white shirts. But with Terry pitching, the Yankees felt that it would be a bit of an edge because he comes directly overhanded and would be right in the middle of that crowd as far as the background is concerned. It's been a bit of a problem here. Here's the 1-2 pitch. Fastball inside. This one a little bit off the corner. So the count is even to Hiller at 2-2. Two and two. As Joe pointed out, a pitcher that comes straight overhand here has the advantage because he's throwing right out of the crowd in center field. Those that drop down a little from the side will be throwing out of the stands out there where it's black. Here's a fastball outside. 3-2. and two. said Hiller had four home runs. I meant four runs batted in. One home run. That was a grand slam homer in the last ball game. One homer, four runs batted in. Terry gets ready. Here's the 3-2 pitch. Outside. He walked him. Hiller walks on the 3-2 pitch. Puts a runner at first base. There's no one out, and the batter will be Jim Davenport, the third baseman. Jim's a right-handed batter. He has a 182 batting average. Under the plate 11 times, he has two hits. No home runs, no runs batted in it yet. Chuck Hiller is on at first base here in the first inning. Terry checks the runner. Here's the pitch. Strike, he got a fastball over. This one around the knees. Davenport squared around, ready to bunt. Whether it was a bluff or not, we'll have to wait and see. Boyer is playing in close at third base, and of course, Scourin holds against the runner at first base. Quebec and Richardson playing back. Terry taking a little time. Checks his sign. Here's a token toss over to first base. Pillar is back in plenty of time. The pitch to Davenport. Strike two. He got the curveball over. So Terry moves out in front of Jimmy Davenport with a strike two count. This is an all-important ball game, maybe even more so for the Yankees than the Giants, as the action will move to Candlestick Park in San Francisco on Friday for the sixth game. Of course, the Giants feel they have an edge at home. Another toss to first base, but Hiller, only standing a step or so off the bag, gets back in plenty of time. Here's the pitch. 
fastball. He struck him out. Jimmy Davenport strikes out as Terry fired the fastball by him. That's one away, and the batter will be Matty Alou. Matty's been to the plate seven times in this series. He's had three hits. 429 batting average. He has one run batted in. George, he was a real hot hitter uh, about the last month of the season. In fact, Hiller was saying that he was, uh, Lou was down to about 230, and he ended up around 290, so he really had to do some fancy hitting to get way up there. This fellow's probably the fastest man in this series going to first base. Here's the first pitch. A curveball. He bounces at the scour, and it is foul. Just outside the line. Lou's taking a step across the line to pick it up. A one-strike count. Terry has thrown a lot of slow curves here in the first inning. And he will throughout the ball game. But he has the good live fastball, so you can't look for the curve, as Davenport might have been doing with two strikes on him, and he just blazed the fastball by him. A runner at first base, one out. We're in the first inning. There's no score in this ball game. Matty Alou standing in with a one-strike count. Terry, normally a fast worker, taking a little time here in the first inning. Makes another throw to first base. Hiller getting practically no lead at all. Here's the pitch. A slow curve, and it's in there. And boy, he really pulled the string on that one, Joe. You can see Alou just kind of give it the how do you do as he bowed. Uh, nothing you can do when you get fooled so completely. Only you can hope for is that you don't come right out of those shoes because he really had Matty Alou leaning forward. That's about as slow a curveball as he's thrown, George. You can reach out and catch that kind. Terry gets set. Makes another throw to first base. Keller back. Here's the bad part about it. Alou now can't look for that slow curve because he might get that blazing fastball. Here's the pitch. Fastball. He pops it foul. This one's going out of play. Still strike two. In case you joined us late, Chuck Hiller walked on a 3-2 pitch. Jim Davenport struck out. Matty Alou batting with a strike two count. Terry got a new baseball from Al Barlick. He didn't like that one. Tosses it in and gets another one. Barlick, the umpire behind the plate today. Charlie Berry is at first base. Stan Landis at second base. And Jim Honachick at third base. Hank Soares down the left field line. Ken Burkhart in right field. The pitch to Alou. He struck him out. A fastball around the knees. And Matty Alou strikes out. Well, it's two down. And the batter will be Willie Mays. Big round of applause for Willie as he comes on. Willie's been to the plate 17 times in this series. He's had five hits for a 294 batting average. He's looking for his first home run. He's batted in one run. Ralph Terry delivers a curve down low. One ball, no strike. Yankees deep and pretty much straight away for Willie. Everybody back except Scourin, who's holding against the runner at first base. Willie right down on the end of the bat, waiting. Here's the pitch. Curve down low. A ball, two, and a no-strike count. Well, the ball players were really disappointed over the rain out yesterday. They were anxious to get into action. We rode back to town on the giant bus, and they were most anxious to play the ball game, but there was no chance to play it here yesterday. Ralph Terry looking in. Checks his runner at first base. The pitch to Mays. Here's a long belt that is curving foul down the left field line. Willie was waiting on the slow curve, and he belted it deep to left, but he pulled it foul. Got that ball up and in, and Willie was really waiting for it because that's one of those room service curveballs, and they get up in your eyes. You couldn't order it any better. It's a ball two and a strike one count. The Giants have a runner at first base with two outs here in the first inning. There's no score in the ball game. The pitch to Mays. Fastball, he fouls it back. This will be in the upper deck. Whoops, something coming out of the upper deck instead of a ball. Somebody reaching for the baseball lost their clipboard. George, somebody's going to be without their ass limbs all afternoon because they're laying on the screen. The count is even at two and two to Willie. Chuck Hiller leading off at first base. Chuck's not getting very far off the bag. Here's the 2-2 pitch. 
down low. Got it over the plate, but too low. Three and two to Mays. That means Hiller will be moving on this pitch. Three, two, two out. A scoreless ball game in the first inning. Ralph Terry against Jack Sanford here this afternoon. Beautiful baseball afternoon in Yankee Stadium. Here's a throw to first base. Once again, Hiller takes one step and he's back on the bag. He's showing a lot of respect for Terry's move to first base, getting practically no lead at all. Ralph gets set. Here's a 3-2 pitch. A ground ball foul. This one off the third base side. Still 3-2 and two to Willie. George, it always used to tickle me the different instructions you get with different type hitters. If uh, about a 230 or 240 hitter is up and you're on first base, they say, now get a good jump so you can break up that double player, get that guy out of there. But if a good hitter like a maze is up there, they do what they're telling Hiller. Stay here and don't you get picked off. Let Willie swing. <laughs> That's right, Joe. You get picked off with maze hitting and <laughs> shoot you. Here's the pitch. Here's a liner to left field. Price racing in. He's got it. Willie Mays hit the ball hard. A line drive straight to Tommy Trash in left field. For the Giants in the first inning, no runs, no hits, no errors. One man left. And the score at the end of the first half of the first inning, the Giants nothing. The Yankees coming to bat. We'll be back with more exciting action from the fifth game of the 1962 World Series after this. Your lawn could die of thirst this summer if it has to depend on the weather to get the water it needs. So be sure you've got quality hoses you can depend on from True Value Hardware Stores. Hi, Pat Summerall to tell you True Value Nylon Reinforced Vinyl Hoses are designed to stand up to the heat and remain flexible in cold weather. And right now you can get their 60-foot True Value Hose for $9.99 or the super rugged 75-foot length for $14.99. Both have 5 8 inch inner diameter and are available only from participating True Value Hardware Stores. And now, more action from Game 5 of the 1962 World Series. Well, we move along into the bottom of the first inning. There's no score in the ball game. Tony Kubek will lead off for the Yankees. He'll be followed by Bobby Richardson and Tommy Trash. Jack Sanford is taking his warm-up tosses. During the regular season, Jack won 24 games and lost seven. And, of course, he was the winner in the second game of this World Series by a score of two to nothing, that game being pitched at Candlestick Park out in San Francisco. Kubek has been to the plate 17 times in the series. He's had four hits for a 235 batting average. He's looking for his first home run and his first run batted in. Another big crowd on hand today, although we do see a few empty seats here today. Kubek, a left-handed batter, waiting on Jack Sanford. Jack goes into the windup. Here's his first pitch. That's ball. It's in there. One strike to Kubek. Giants had a runner at first base in the first inning. In case you joined us late, Hiller drew a walk to open the game, but he was stranded there as Terry got the next three batters. Here's the pitch to Tony. Pass ball outside. One ball, one strike. The Giants play Kubek straight away, even a little bit toward left field. Tony will hit the ball into left and left center a lot. Sanford gets ready. Here's the 1-1 one, one pitch. A line drive up the middle. Hiller gets his glove on him, but he can't hold it. Kubek is on at first base. A low liner through the middle. Hiller racing over, trying to make a backhand stop. Got his glove on it, but he couldn't hold it. It'll be a single for Tony Kubek. So the Yankees have a runner at first base. No one out, and the batter is Bobby Richardson. Bobby's been to the plate 17 times in this series. He has two hits for a 1-1-8 batting average. They've been doing a real good job on Richardson with high fastballs and making him hit to the right side and just shifting the defense that way. Sanford ready. Now he steps off, bluffing Kubek back. Davenport playing in close at third. Jimmy is about a step in front of the bag. Moving in a little closer. 
Here's the pitch to Bobby. He bunts down the third baseline. It's foul. It was not the sacrifice type. Bobby was bunting for the base hit. Dropped the bat at the last moment. Pulled it outside the line. A one-strike count to Bobby Richardson. Little right-handed hitting second baseman. In the last two series that Bobby has played in, he has reached great heights. In this series, as Joe said, they've been pitching him well. He's not been able to get off the ground so far. Here's the one-strike pitch. Fast ball, it's too low. Sanford got that one over the plate, but it was below the knees. A lot of times when a fellow will bunt that ball for the base hit, bunt and foul, and then run the count to 1-1, where Richardson is right now, he can handle that bat, and with Kubek on, you certainly have to be alive for a possible hit and run play to break up that infield, because Richardson likes to hit with those infielders moving. Sanford checks his runner. Now he steps off again. He has that in mind, Joe, as he's keeping Sanford, keeping uh, Kubek close to first base. Bobby Richardson waiting. Makes a quick throw to first, almost a wild throw. McCovey knocked it down. Well, one of the big things that tells the Yankees is that there is no pitch out play on uh, because when you have a pitch out play on, you don't want your pitcher to be thrown over there. Just hold him close and give you a chance to make the play. And anytime you see a pitcher throw over to first base, you know there's no pitch out on. And unless Allen wants to put one on right now, you're fairly safe in assuming that there's nothing going on as far as the Giants putting on a play. Sanford gets set. There's another throw to first. Go back back in time. It's a good way to break up a play, though, George. As you well know, having that pitcher constantly thrown over there because if Kubek don't get the good jump, he don't run. Here's the 1-1 pitch. Bobby swings and hits a grounder foul down the first baseline. That one was hit like a bullet just outside the line. Charlie Berry, the first base umpire who was standing right on the line, quickly gave the sign it was foul. Bobby trying to hit behind the runner through the hole between first and second. Getting it outside the line, so it's one ball and two strikes. We're in the bottom of the first inning. There's no score in the ball game. The Yankees have a runner at first base with no one out. Sanford taking a little time as he looks in. Here's the pitch. A ground ball hit to the second baseman. Might be a double. He bobbles the ball. Everybody's safe. set to make the double play. A big bouncer near the bag at second, and in his anxiety to flip it over to Pagan, it dropped out of his glove and everybody's safe. That was a tailor-made double play. Big hop and all, but Chuck let it get away from him at the last moment. So the Yankees have runners at first and second. No one out, and the batter will be Tom Fresh. Tommy will be batting left-handed against the right-hander Jack Sanford. Been to the plate 17 times. He has six hits for a 353 batting average. So Sanford is in a hole here in the first inning. Two on with no one out. No score in the ball game. Davenport in close, looking for the bunt from third base. McCovey is playing in a couple of steps. He's ready for the bunt. The pitch to Trash. Here's a drive back to it. Play. Here's a throw to second. Save. Tommy Trash hit a line drive back to Sanford, who speared it. He had a triple play, if you'd have realized it, Joe. I think Sanford forgot that the man was on at second base because he took a couple steps and then flipped the ball, and then you could see him shake his fist, and now he's standing on the mound with his hands on his hips. He has, uh, has forgotten, I'm almost certain, that Kubek was on at second base because Tony was about 15 feet from uh, second base, and George, as you so quickly said, it could have been a triple play if he wheels and fires to Pagano with Johnny on the spot. If he throws to second first, he has a triple play easily enough because McCovey, after taking the throw and getting Richardson, threw down to Pagan, and it was very close on Kubek. Both runners were moving. So there's two outs with a runner at second base, and the batter is Mickey Mantle. Well, it's the little excitement and pressure of the World Series that causes things like that. You just don't uh, pick things up as quickly as you normally would. The pitch to Mantle. Strike. He got a fastball over. Mickey's been to the plate 15 times. He has two hits. A 133 batting average. 
Sanford really helping himself out of a jam as he speared that line drive. It was headed for center field. What a great play, and there's two outs now with a runner at second base. Mickey Mantle right down on the end of the bat. Here's the pitch. Ball, it's too low. One ball, one strike. Mickey is looking for his first home run in this World Series. He's hit a lot of balls hard, but so far he has not been able to get under the ball. Most of his hard shots have been line drives. The wind is blowing today into right and right center field. Not a strong breeze, just enough to move the flag on the flagpole in deep center field. Sanford taking a little time, looks in. Here's the 1-1 pitch. Strike two. That's ball at the outside corner. One ball, two strikes to Mantle. The Yankees have a runner at second base with two outs here in the first inning. There's no score. So far, he hasn't thrown any curveballs, all fastballs. In contrast to the way Marischal pitched, for example, Marischal threw a lot of slow curveballs and got Mantle twice with the slow curveball, but Stanford is relying on that good fastball that he has, and he's just been moving it in and out. We mentioned before the ball game, Tom Heller, the catcher, says there's no getting ahead of Mantle or Maris and working on him. They start working on him from the very first pitch. Well, Mickey wanted Al Barlick to have a look at the baseball. Sanford tossed it in, and Barlick looked it over and tossed it right back to him. So it's one ball, two strikes. Sanford is making Mantle wait. Mickey's staying right in the batter's box. Jack gets ready. Here's the pitch. In the dirt with a fastball. Haller made a nice play as he scooped it up. That'll even the count at two and two. No score in the first inning. Tony Kubek is down at second base with two outs. Mantle taking a little time as he gets out of the box and steps back in. A ball two and a strike two count. Sanford checks his runner at second base. The pitch to Mantle. Outside. That one was close. Fastball just off the corner. Three and two to Mickey. Well, Marischal threw him curveballs, Joe, on the three-two pitch. Slow curveballs. So we'll check Sanford to see what the pitching pattern might be. Right here in the first inning, it's three-two to Mickey. Sanford certainly will be trying to keep it away from him. He's ready. Here's the pitch. Fastball. He hits it on the ground to the first baseman. McCovey bobbled it to second baseman. Hiller picks it up and throws the first. He's safe. McCovey let the ball get away from him. Hiller picked it up. Made the throw to Sanford. In time to get Mantle, but he pulled him off the bag. Oh, we'll have to wait. There's an error on the play. It's charged against McCovey. Back stopping at third base so the Yankees have runners at first and third with two out and the batter will be Roger Maris Joe a very unusual play and they almost got him almost got him is right George and one play where if it just gets a little bit past the pitcher covering the run's going to score because Haller cannot back up the play he had to protect the whole play so there was nobody backing up the play it was a real gamble throw by Chuck Hiller you always like to see that in a ball player coming back after making an error gamble and try to get his man. Sanford has been in a lot of trouble in his first inning, but he's been really blowing his neck and pitching out of it. Let's see what happens. Here's Roger Maris. The first pitch, a swing and a miss. There goes Mantle to second. There'll be no throw down to second base. McCovey was playing deep at first base, giving Mantle a lot of room, and Mickey racing into second base. Well, they have runners at second and third with two out. A one-strike count to Roger Maris. Raj has three hits in the series and 13 trips. 231 batting average. Maris has four runs batted in. He has no home runs. A one strike count. Sanford looking in. The pitch to Raj. Down around the knees. A strike two count. Sanford coming in with an overhand curveball around the knees. Again, the Giants are in the ship. They have three infielders on the right side. McCovey, Hiller, and Pagan. A ground ball to the shortstop position would get a couple of runs in here. 
Sanford taking a lot of time. Gets ready. The pitch to Maris. Outside. Fastball high and away. One ball, two strikes. Davenport is deep at third and wide of the bag. But there's a lot of room between Davenport and Pagan, who is playing almost a normal second base position. Here's the one-two pitch. Here's a fly ball hit to left field. Alou going back. He's there waiting. Got it. Roger Maris flies to Alou in left field. No runs in the inning on one hit. There were two errors. Two men left, and the score at the end of one full inning of play. The Giants nothing, the Yankees nothing. Game five of the World Series of 1962 continues after this. Norm, we've all been talking. Can't hear you. My engine's knocking. I was saying, we've decided you're out of the carpool. Out of charcoal? Don't even own a hibachi. No, out of the carpool, Norm. Oh, but I've been driving to work with you guys for three years. We can't take it any longer. Is it because I keep the windows down in the winter? No, Norm. And up in the summer? It's your engine. It knocks. It runs on. What? I can't hear you. You Fill up with Amico Premium Lead Free, or we're through with you. Barbecue? I told you, don't own a hibachi. Get Amico Premium Lead Free. Oh. It's got 14 benefits. Gives good mileage, helps stop engine run on, and knock. I'm sorry, what? Knock. Huh? Knock, knock. I love these jokes. Who's there? Norm. Norm Norm who? Norm, Amico Premium Lead Free. I don't get it. At 92 octane, that's higher than most other lead frees. You'll solve performance problems from the very first tankful. Sure, I'm thankful, but I got a better idea. I'm going to use Amico Premium Lead Free. Hot dog. Okay, you win, but I got to get a hibachi first. Amico Gasolines. You expect more from a leader. You're listening to a classic World Series from the archives of NBC Radio Sports. Game 5 of the World Series of 1962. Well, the Yankees threatened in the bottom of the first but failed to score. They picked up a single and two errors by the Giants, but Jack Sanford was equal to the occasion. And he got the ever-dangerous Roger Maris on a fly to left with two on and two out. Willie McCovey will lead off for the Giants in the second inning. He'll be followed by Philippe Alou and then the catcher, Tom Haller. McCovey is a big left-handed batter. He's been to the plate seven times in this series. He's had one hit. That was a long home run off Terry in San Francisco. 143 batting average. Ralph ready. Here's the pitch. Fastball. It's in there. One strike to McCovey. The Yankees are deep and far around to the right for Willie. Play him to pull all the way. Here's the pitch. Another fastball. He swings and misses. Strike two to McCovey. Terry's keeping that ball inside, and uh, the home run that McCovey hit, the thing that surprised Terry was not this big fella's power, but how the ball was able to stay there because it was way inside. He thought it would curve foul. Willie waiting. The two strike pitch. Inside. A fastball that pushed him back. One and two to McCovey. He's right down on the end of the bat. Big bat looks like a toothpick in his hands as he waves it around. Here's the one-two pitch. He struck him out. Threw the fastball by him, and Willie McCovey goes down swinging. That's three strikeouts for Ralph Terry. One away, and the batter will be the left fielder, Philippe Alou. Philippe has been to the plate 14 times, and he has three hits for a 2.14 average. Right-handed batter waiting on Ralph Terry. Here's the first pitch. He swings and sends a fly ball to center field. Mantle is waiting on it. He's got it. There's two outs. Alou goes out on the first pitch on a fly to Mickey Mantle. will bring up the catcher, Tom Holler. Tom's been to the plate seven times. He has three hits for a 429 batting average. He has one home run and two runs batted in. A scoreless ball game. We're in the top of the second inning. Two outs with no one on. Here's the first pitch to Haller. Curve ball down low. One ball, no strike. George, here's one fella I know is looking for a slow curve ball. It, during batting practice, they were taking at least six swings, and he asked Larry Jansen for nothing but curve balls. Jansen throws an overhanded curve ball, much like the one Terry throws. Here's the one and no pitch. Fastball, he bunts it down the third baseline. If it stays fair, it is foul. Boyer letting it roll. He had no chance to get him. 
Just let the bunt roll at the last moment, just before it hit the bag, it rolled outside the line. That was the last thing in the world, Joe, the Yankees were looking for. <laughs> was a bunt. And Haller had it beaten out. Coming from that big catcher, uh, boy, it was way back, and you could understand why. And if it stays fair, he could walk down there. Yes, sir, that was the last thing they expected. Here's the 1-1 pitch. Slow curve. He hits it on the ground foul down the first baseline. This one's skipping into the corner where the umpire, Ken Burkhardt, picks it up. So it's one ball, two strikes, Tom Haller. Big, tall, left-handed hitting catcher. A scoreless ball game. We're in the top of the second inning. The all-important fifth ball game of the series. Here's the one-two pitch. Curve, he hits this one foul over near the Yankee dugout. Still one ball, two strikes. Tomorrow's an off day. Everybody traveling back to the coast and the World Series will open in Candlestick Park on Friday for the sixth game of the series. Then game number seven, if necessary, will be played on Saturday. Terry into the windup. Here's the one-two pitch. Slow curve. He hits it hard. Richardson scoops it up. Here's the throw to first. He's out. A low liner. Bobby Richardson playing it on the short hop. Flips it over to Bill Scourn in time to get his man. No runs, no hits, no errors, no one left. And the score at the end of the first half of the second inning. The Giants nothing, the Yankees nothing. Back with more action from this classic World Series game of 1962 after this. Now listen, but listen quick. Because it comes and goes just like that. The Pennzoil Chaparral, driven by national champion Johnny Rutherford. Here it comes again, all bright and brilliant in its traditional Pennzoil yellow color. That's a $40,000 engine that just roared by, turning out 9,500 torturous RPM. Does it mile after mile after hard-running mile, race after race after race. The Pennzoil Chaparral. It has Pennzoil written on it and Pennzoil in it. Protection for a winner. Pennzoil Motor Oil. Protection for cars like the Chaparral and cars like yours. Pass for it. America has asked for Pennzoil. America has to try. Pennzoil. He asked for Motor Oil. Pennzoil. NBC Radio is presenting a rebroadcast of Game 5 of the 1962 World Series. The San Francisco Giants versus the New York Yankees. Elston Howard will lead off for the Yankees here in the bottom of the second inning, followed by Bill Scourn, then Cletus Boyer. No scores. We move into the bottom of the second. The Giants have no runs, no hits. They've made two errors. The Yankees, no runs on one hit. They have no errors. The Yankees had base runners all over the place in the first inning, but Sanford... Getting Maris on a fly to left to end the threat. Here's Howard, a right-handed batter. Three hits and ten trips for an even 300 batting average. The Giants play him straight away, deep in the outfield. Everybody back on the infield. Here's the pitch. Inside, a fastball that got away from Sanford, almost hit him. One ball, no strike. That one was high and tight. Lou made a great play on Howard earlier in this series. On a line drive, he hit the deep left field. Here's the pitch. He swings and fouls it back. From coming into the press box. One ball, one strike. Yankees batting in the bottom of the second inning. No score in the ball game. Jack Sanford against Ralph Terry here this afternoon. Jack taking a little time as he looks in. Here's the 1-1 pitch. Curve, he swings and misses. Bad curveball breaking down and away to Howard. One ball, two strikes. Elliott taking a couple of turns around the batter's box before he gets back in. He knew it was a bad curve, but he'd gone too far with his swing. Here's the pitch. Ball outside. Two and two to Howard. Sanford thought he caught the corner with that one. The on-deck circle is Bill Scourin for the Yankees.
Elston Howard right down on the end of the bat waiting. Ronford still looking in. Takes the long look. Now he's stepping off the rubber. And as he does, Elston Howard gets out. A ball two and a strike two count. Here's the pitch to Alley. Curve. It's in the dirt. This one gets away from Haller going back to the screen. So it's three and two. It's almost the same pitch that he got Elston to swing at before. Pitchers have different ways of shaking a catcher's sign off. Uh, the easy way is to just nod your head no. The other way is to flick the glove. The one Sanford is using is where he's just staring the catcher around. Just keeps looking in until you give him the pitch that he wants. He gets ready, and here's the 3-2 pitch. A swing and a miss. He struck him out. Through the curveball on the 3-2 pitch, and Elston Howard strikes out. Strikeout number one for Sanford. It's one away, and the batter will be Bill Scourin. The Moose has three hits and eight trips. 375 batting average. He has one run batted in. We're in the bottom of the second inning. One out with no one on, no score in the game. Sanford delivers. Ball in tight. One ball, no strike. As Joe told you, the Giants scatter out all over the place for Bill Scour, and there's no way to play him. He hits to all fields. Here's the one and no pitch. A swing and a miss, and the bat flies out of his hand. Goes all the way past Rossetti in the third base coach's box. When he hit the triple over Willie Mays' head, uh, Moose said that the first time Willie got on, he said, come on, Moose. I'm tired. Don't make me run. 461 in dead center field here, and to hit a ball over Willie Mays' head, you really have to tattoo it. Scowling tremendous power. It's a one ball, one strike count to the Moose. He gets his bat back. Stepping in to face Sanford. Sanford is throwing a hard curveball here today. Here's a 1 1 pitch. That's ball down low. Ball two and strike one. That fastball he's turning loose inside, moving him back, isn't hurting that curveball either. He's got these guys going back a little bit and really snapping it off. Jack gets ready. Here's the 2-1 pitch. Ball, another one high and inside, and the Moose claiming he was hit by the pitch. But Al Barlick says no, and Scarron protesting that the ball hit him on the hand as he was getting out of the way. Al Barlick said no. Did not, so Scarron will be stepping back in with a ball three and a strike one count. As Joe said, Sanford is keeping the fastball in tight, and he's coming low and away with a curveball to keep the Yankee batters off balance. Bill stepping back in. Here's the 3-1 pitch. Foul ball back to the screen. Three and two to Scarron. Cletus Boyer is in the on-deck circle. Yankees batting in the second inning. No score in the ballgame. Sanford threw a curveball to Howard on the 3-2 pitch. We'll be watching to see what he throws Scourin in this spot. You'll see Sanford change baseballs a lot during the course of the afternoon. Right now he's getting a new one. He's one of those pitchers that uh, just has to feel right in his hands. And uh, all baseballs, of course, are supposed to be the same, but there are little changes, like maybe a little higher seam, or it just doesn't feel right. And if it doesn't, uh, Sanford, he'll find that spot that doesn't feel right, and new baseball. He'll change a lot of them. Here's a 3-2 pitch. A swing and a miss, a curveball, and he struck him out. Bill Scourin strikes out on the curve. That's two outs. And the batter will be Cleet Boyer. Sanford refusing to give in to these batters. Coming in to two straight hitters on a 3-2 count with a curveball. There's Boyer. Four hits and 13 trips. That's been a big difference in this fellow's pitching. In other years, he gets 3-2. and two, He would just rear back and fire that great fastball and match his fastball against the hitter. But... Against Howard and Scar, and he just wouldn't give in to him, and he went to the curveball and got it over and got a big strikeout. Here's the pitch to Boyer. A ground ball hit to the shortstop. Pagan has it. Here's a throw to first. He's out. Cletus Boyer goes out short to first. A run, so hits, no errors, no one left. And the score at the end of two, the Yankees nothing and the Giants nothing. 
This original 1962 World Series broadcast will continue on the NBC radio network. Wendy, ain't no reason to go any place else. We were sitting at Wendy's feeling absolutely superior, eating Wendy's super chicken sandwich, real boneless breast of chicken, while at another famous establishment, people were actually eating something referred to as processed chicken. Well, I said to my wife, Bambi, and daughter, Buffy, some people just don't know what's real. Wendy, Wendy, ain't no, ain't no reason to go any place else. The Bell System presents Miss Ella Fitzgerald. Talk to the children. Talk to the children. Share a little secret. Share a little life. Growing up so far away. Growing up so fast. NBC Radio Sports is presenting a classic World Series broadcast. Game 5 of 1962, featuring superstars Mickey Mantle, Roger Maris, Willie Mays, and Willie McCovey. Well, at the end of two, the Yankees, no runs on one hit and no errors. The Giants, no runs, no hits, and they've made two errors. Jose Pagan, the shortstop, will be the leadoff man. He'll be followed by Jack Sanford, then Chuck Hiller. Pagan has been to the plate ten times. He has five hits for an even 500 batting average. Jose has driven in one run. He was the man that broke the scoreless streak for Whitey Ford with a bunt single. The Yankees are going to play in close on the infield. Jose, a fast base runner and a good bunter. Terry delivers a curve. He swings and misses. One strike. Jose looked like he might have been waiting on the curveball. He really had a ripple at it. A one-strike count. Warrior moving in a little closer at third base. Terry into the windup. Here's the pitch. A line drive to center field. A shot up the middle. And Pagan with the first giant hit. A line shot to center field. The runner at first with no one out. And the batter will be Jack Sanford, the pitcher. There's Jack coming on. A big round of applause for Sanford. Oh, he's been quite a pitcher in this World Series. He shut the Yankees out in the second game of the series, two to nothing. He's blanked them through the first two innings here today. Right now, he's checking with Whitey Lockman, the coach at third base, to see if the bunt sign is in order. Boyer evidently thinks so. He's right in on top of Sanford. Here's the pitch. Strike. He got a fastball over. Sanford squared around, ready to bunt. Pulled the bat back, and Barlick went up with the right hand. He'll have to bunt that ball on that first base line, George, the way uh, Boyer is right in on top of him, unless Alvin Dark may want to switch off and start his man at first base. The Yankees have a play that they use, too. Now, it's a pickoff play, and now we got all kinds of conferences. Lockman talking to Sanford, Terry talking to Scarron, and Pagan and Jansen talking. And I'm sure Jansen's talking about that very play, which is one where Scowlin will break in about four quick steps on a given signal and then break back towards the bag and take the throw from the pitcher, hoping that they can uh, get that base runner. Well, we're ready to go. Sanford back in. A one-strike count. Terry makes a quick throw to first. Bagan back in town. Boy, you're still coming in. Here's the pitch. He bunts down the first baseline. It's a good one. Scourin picks it up. Throws to Bobby Richardson. In time for the out. As Pagan moves down to second base. So the sacrifice works for the Giants. They have a runner at second with one out. And the batter will be Chuck Hiller, the second baseman. Chuck threw a walk to start this ball game. Left-handed batter with a 267 batting average. a grand slam home run by this fellow that broke up the ball game on Monday. Terry taking a little time as he looks in. Here's the first pitch. A swing and a foul. This one bouncing out of the mid of Howard. One strike. 
A scoreless ball game. We're in the top of the third inning. Each team with one hit. Giants put Sanford in a hole in the first inning with two errors, but he pitched out of it. Chuck Hiller choking the bat. Waits on Terry. Here's the pitch. Curve ball. He hits it to left field. It's going to be trouble. Trace racing over. He can't get it. It bounces by him. Here's a run coming in. Hiller on his way to second. a fly ball down the left field line. Trash racing over near the line. Couldn't get it. It bounced by him. Bagan coming in to score and Hiller raced to second with a double. So the Giants have taken a one to nothing lead here in the third inning. The batter is Jim Davenport. Jimmy struck out his first time at bat. Right-handed batter. Terry delivers a fastball up high. One ball, no strike. Elston Howard calling time as he races out to the mound for a conference with Terry. So Chuck Hiller drives in the first run of this fifth game with a slicing double into the corner in left field. And you can hear the Giant fans all over this stadium as they start their rhythmic applause. These Giants have been able to use the little things in baseball and make them pay off. The little sacrifice bunt here by Sanford moved the man in the scoring position. In the first game where Terry and Sanford hooked up, it was a bunt uh, in that first inning after Hiller had doubled that set it up. Sacrifice bunt by Philippe Alou, so the little bunt figuring very prominently. Here's the pitch to Davenport. He swings and misses through the fastball by him. One ball, one strike. Pagan opened this inning with a single to center field. Jack Sanford sacrificed, and Chuck Hiller sliced a double to left. Here's the 1-1 pitch. A ground ball hit the third. Boyer has it. Flips it over to Scourin and plenty of time to get Davenport as Hiller has to hold on at second base. Well, there's two down, and the batter will be the right fielder, Matty Alou. Matty was a strikeout victim his first time at bat. Bud Daly, a left-hander, is throwing in the bullpen for the Yankees in deep right field. It's a one to nothing ball game. The Giants are out in front. Hiller at second base with two outs. The pitch to Alou. Slow curve. He hits it foul down the first baseline. One strike. Maddie got out in front of that one. Drilled it hard through the coach's box. Terry getting a new baseball from Al Barlick. Falls time as he goes back to the rosin bag. One run on two hits for the Giants. No runs on one hit for the Yankees. Matty Alou standing in with a one-strike count. Terry delivers a curve. He hits it on the ground to the shortstop. Kubek has it. Flips it to first. He is out on a close play. And it was close as Alou was really flying down the first baseline. One run in the inning on two hits. No errors. One man left. And the score at the end of the first half of the third inning. The Giants won. The Yankees nothing. We'll be back with more exciting action from the fifth game of the 1962 World Series after this. World Series Classics is brought to you on WTMJ, Milwaukee. Oscar Brown Jr., star of public television from Jump Street, headlines the entertainment at the 8th Annual Community Arts Festival, sponsored by the Milwaukee Inner City Arts Council. 
Brown is noted for his unique interpretation of Afro-American history through the use of song, dance, and verse. I'm Marie Crockett, inviting you to see and hear Oscar Brown, Jr., and a magnificent lineup of entertainers at the Community Arts Festival Saturday and Sunday, August 1st and 2nd, at the Performing Arts Center. Festival gates open at 11.30 a.m. It's free. And now, more action from Game 5 of the 1962 World Series. Ralph Terry will lead it off for the Yankees in the bottom of the third inning, followed by Kubek and then Bobby Richardson. A one-to-nothing ball game. The Giants are out in front. A single by Pagan, a sacrifice, and a double by Chuck Hiller, getting the run across in the top of this inning. Terry's a right-handed batter. Sanford looking into Haller to get the sign. Here's the pitch to Ralph. Fastball right down the middle. One strike. Ralph choking the bat as he waits on Sanford. Here's the pitch. A curve. He swings and misses. This one breaking down in the dirt. A strike two count. Sanford has not been getting the curveball over, but he's been getting the Yankee batters to swing at it, which is just as good. Here's the pitch. He tries to bunt. He missed it. So Terry is out on strike. Ralph was going to bunt with two strikes on him. Sanford came in with another curveball that broke down in the dirt. Terry bunted at it and missed. Strikeout number three for Sanford. That's one away. And the batter will be Tony Kubek. The difference in the curveballs has been that uh, Terry's has been a slow one where the giant hitters have been able to follow it, whereas uh, Sanford has been throwing that hard curveball, that dive bomber, and they've been kind of just nipping at it. They haven't really been able to follow it. They've been breaking off the last minute. Here's Kubek, who lined a single to center field to open the ball game for the Yankees. Left-handed batter. Sanford delivers a fastball. It's in there. One strike. One to nothing. The Giants lead the Yankees. We're in the bottom of the third inning. One out with no one on. Sanford delivers a fastball up high. One ball, one strike. In the sixth game of this series at Candlestick Park, Billy Pierce will be the pitcher for the Giants and more than likely Bill Stafford for the Yankees. Although Houck said he could use Whitey Ford if he desires. Here's the 1-1 pitch. Outside again, ball two and strike one. Very interesting question was asked of Houck. Uh, newspaper man asked Houck if the outcome of this game would uh, determine the pitcher. He said, no. He said, I've made up my mind already. I know who's going to pitch, but I'm not going to announce it until a workout in San Francisco. A ball two and a strike one count. The pitch to Kubek. He swings and pops it up into shallow center field. Pagan is going out, calling for it. The shortstop has it. Tony Kubek pops to the shortstop. That's two down. And the batter will be Bobby Richardson. Bobby was safe on an error back in the first inning. Chuck Hiller booted his ground ball. Bobby has two hits and 18 trips. The Giants won. The Yankees nothing here in the third inning. Sanford delivers a curve. It's high and inside. One ball, no strikes. Giants play Bobby straight away, not too deep. Bobby, a line drive hitter, will hit to all fields. Here's the one and no pitch. A swing and a miss. One ball, one strike. Sanford has the Yankees swinging at bad pitches today. That's to his credit that he is so deceptive that it looks like a strike until the last moment. Here's the one one pitch. Outside, a fastball off the corner. Ball two and strike one. Most of the bad pitches they swung at have been breaking balls. Curves down and away. Here's the two one pitch. He swings and pops it up on the infield. Willie McCovey at first base is calling for it. He's got it. The side's retired. No runs, no hits, no errors, no one left. And the score, at the end of three, the Giants won. The Yankees nothing. Game five of the World Series of 1962 continues after this.
Morning seems to start out better. You seem to go much better. When you start the day together, Maxwell House and you get back to the last of feeling. Just Maxwell House, only Maxwell House. A taste of feeling like no other coffee. Always good to the last drop. George brought his boss home for dinner with no warning. How'd it go? I had to work fast, so I started a quiche. Ace the rescue. Right, they're easy. And elegant. And economical. You know, at 90 cents a dozen, large eggs are just 60 cents a pound. I know. Didn't my mother call? Uh Uh-uh. No, I left the cooking to George, Mm. and his boss was so impressed, he's moving him up in the company. Really? Right. Up to the 10th floor restaurant, they need a new chef. (laughs) The incredible edible egg. Sponsored by the American Egg Board. You're listening to a classic World Series from the archives of NBC Radio Sports. Game 5 of the World Series of 1962. Well, at the end of three, it's a one-to-nothing ballgame. The Giants are out in front of the Yankees. Willie Mays will lead off for San Francisco. He'll be followed by Willie McCovey and then Philippe Alou. Mays lined the ball to trash in the first inning. He's 0 for 1 in this game. Willie with five hits and 18 trips to the plate. Ralph Terry looking in. Here's the pitch to Willie. Curveball, he bounces it foul behind the plate. One strike. The Giants picked up a run in the third inning. That's been the only scoring in this game. A single by Pagan, a sacrifice bunt, and a double by Chuck Hiller getting the run in. Here's the one-strike pitch. Ball up high. Willie checked his swing in time. One ball, one strike. Giants have one run on two hits. The Yankees have no runs on one hit. Here's the 1-1 pitch. Strike two. Fastball over the inside corner. Willie stepped back. Now Barlick went up with the right hand. One ball, two strikes. the pitch. A swing and a foul tip. Terry coming in with a slow curve. Mays foul tipped it out of the mid of Elston Howard. Still a ball and two strikes. Boy, it's turned out to be a beautiful afternoon here in New York. Bright, sunshiny afternoon. A few clouds drifting by. Terry into the windup. The pitch to Mays. Down low. Curve breaking down and away. The count is even at two and two. Terry checks the sign. The 2-2 pitch. A swing and a miss. He struck him out. Terry threw the fastball. Run on by Willie Mays. Strikeout number four for Ralph. There's one away. And the batter will be Willie McCovey. McCovey struck out his first time at bat. Both these pitchers so far have really had great control of all their pitches. That fastball was out on that outside corner. Terry wanted to hit that corner as Howard gave him the target, and he hit it. Sanford has just been great with his control. McCovey, a big left-handed batter, waiting. Here's the first pitch. Curveball, it's in there. One strike. Terry struck McCovey out on a high fastball back in the second inning. Starts him off here in the fourth with a slow curve. Ready? The pitch inside. This one pushed him back. One ball, one strike. A one to nothing ball game. We're in the fourth inning. Giants out in front. Here's the one one pitch. Pass ball hit on the ground foul over near the Yankee dugout. One ball, two strikes. The short right field fence here in Yankee Stadium. Makes a very inviting target to Willie McCovey. Of course, fences don't mean too much to this fellow. When he gets a hold of one, it goes. Terry checking the sign. He didn't like that one. He steps off, waving into Howard to start over. Here's the pitch. 
A ground ball hit to the second baseman. Bobby Richardson has it to throw to first. He's out. Willie McCovey goes out. Second to first. That's two down. And the batter will be Philippe Ballou. Philippe sent a fly ball to Mantle in center field back in the second inning. Strong right-handed batter. He's been jumping on that first ball in this series, uh, Alou, and he's been hitting the ball hard. This fella has shown no concern at all for the sun field here in left field. Philippe has doing, been doing a wonderful job in left field. Here's the pitch. Curve ball. It's in there. One strike to Alou. Two outs with no one on in the top of the fourth inning. The Giants won. The Yankees nothing. Terry pounds his glove. Here's the pitch. Slow curve. Hit down the left field line. It is fair ball into the corner. It gets by Trash. Here's a move on his way to second. Around second on his way to third. Mantle is throwing the ball in. They're going to hold him at third base. Philippe Ballou lined one into the corner in left field. It caromed off the fence. Got by Tommy Trash. Went all the way into deep left center. Mickey Mantle backing up the play at the 402 sign. Fired it into the infield, and they held a Lou at third base. George, you could see the third base coach, Whitey Lockman, just waiting for the handling of the relay. Kubek was the middle man on that play, and had Mantle not been able to hit the relay man with two outs, you can bet that Whitey Lockman would have waved Al Lou in. But once uh, Mantle hit his relay man, Kubek, Lockman put up the stop sign because Kubek threw a strike, which was cut off by Scarron as it headed toward Delston Howard. Here's Tom Haller, the big catcher. Terry delivers a fastball in tight. One ball, no strike. Very alert fielding by Mantle. Otherwise, Alou would have had an inside-the-park home run. As that ball hit the fence and skipped by Trish, went all the way in the left center. Here's the pitch. Curve ball, it's in there. A ball and a strike to Haller. A runner at third base with two outs here in the fourth inning. The Giants lead one to nothing. Haller bounced to the second baseman his first time at bat. Terry into the windup, the pitch. Ball in tight. Ball two and strike one. Both Scourn and Richardson are very deep and near the line for Haller, playing him to pull all the way. Here's the 2 1 pitch. There's a liner to right. Maris racing in. He's there, makes the catch. Tom Haller lined the ball straight to Maris in right field. No runs on one hit. There were no errors. One man left, and the score at the end of the first half of the fourth inning the Giants won, the Yankees nothing. Back with more action from this classic World Series game of 1962 after this. Excuse me, sir, but what's that you're raising up That's there? That's the prime rate. Going up today. Oh, I see. Some days it goes up, some days it goes down. And what exactly does the prime rate do? Well, mostly it scares people silly. A little higher... If the bank prime rate is scaring you out of a new car, ask your GM dealer about GMAC. GMAC has financing right now at rates that make sense. So get that new Chevy, Pontiac, Olds, Buick, Cadillac, or GMC truck you want with help from GMAC, the financing people from General Motors. Hi, Pat Summerall to remind you that good household help is hard to find, except at True Value Hardware Stores. There you'll find a selection of quality-designed Rubbermaid products to provide helpful convenience all over the house. Use Rubbermaid stackable storage bins to organize kitchen utensils, or in the family room to store small toys and sewing notions. Rubbermaid shower accessories will help keep bathrooms looking neat. Plus, you'll find durable Rubbermaid pitchers, waste baskets, and more at participating True Value hardware stores and home centers. NBC Radio is presenting a rebroadcast of Game 5 of the 1962 World Series, the San Francisco Giants versus the New York Yankees. Well, it's a one to nothing ball game. The Giants out in front of the Yankees as we go into the bottom of the fourth inning. Tommy Trash will lead off. He'll be followed by Mickey Mantle and then Roger Maris. The Yankees have but one hit off Jack Sanford. That was a single by Kubek to open the ball game. The Giants have picked up three off Ralph Terry. 
George, you remember the little things? It was the second time at bat at Candlestick that Trash tried to beat out the bunt and pop that ball up that Sanford had a little bit of trouble with and ended up a base hit for him, a bunt. Here's the first pitch. Ball outside. One ball or no strike. Tommy lined into a double play his first time at bat. He hit a line drive right back to Sanford with runners at first and second and no one out. Sanford then turned through to McCovey at first base, doubling off Richardson. Here's the one and no pitch. A curveball, he hits it into shallow center field. Mays racing in fast, maybe trouble. It is in there. Here's Crash on his way to second. He'll hold on at second base. Pagan, Hiller, and Mays all converging in shallow center field. Pagan got his glove on the ball. He couldn't hold it. It scored as a two-base hit for Tommy Trish. Great play by Pagan, who came from nowhere, stuck his glove right into the middle of the fielders and got his glove on him, but he couldn't hold it. So the tying run for the Yankees at second base with no one out, and the batter is Mickey Mantle. Mickey was safe on an error his first time at bat. McCovey let his ground ball get away from him. Sanford gets set. The pitch to Mantle. Ball down low. One ball or no strike. I think he's been to the plate 16 times in this series with two hits. Got a double off Sanford out in San Francisco. A double coming in the ninth inning in the game where Sanford won it two to nothing. Here's the one and no pitch. Strike, fastball, it caught the outside part of the plate. One and one to Mickey. Tommy Trash at second base with no one out. We're in the bottom of the fourth inning. The Giants lead one to nothing. Another full house here at Yankee Stadium for this fifth ball game. The pitch to Mantle. He bunts it as foul. Mickey was going to drag one down the first baseline. Both McCovey, the first baseman, and Hiller, the second baseman, playing deep. But he fouled it back. So it'll be one ball, two strike. Al Barley, played umpire, putting a new baseball into play. Well, that started infielders moving in all directions. McCovey and Hiller racing in. Sanford going for first base, and Haller was going right down the line. Didn't realize the ball had gone foul for a moment. Here's the one-two pitch. Outside, he tried to get the corner with a fastball. Two and two to Mickey. One to nothing. The Giants lead the Yankees. The Yankees have a runner at second base with no one out. We're in the bottom of the fourth inning. Sanford taking a little time, trying to get out of a tough spot. Comes to a set position. The pitch to Mantle. Outside, Mickey held up on it. Three and two to Mantle. Roger Maris is waiting in the on deck circle. Yankees trying to get even in this ball game. Giants picked up a run in the third inning. Sanford gets set. The three two pitch. Ball, it's too high. He threw the curve ball on the three two pitch, but he got it up high. So Mantle goes to first base with a walk. The Yankees have runners at first and second. No one out. And the batter will be Roger Maris. Well, it'll be interesting here, Joe, to see if the Giants go into the shift with two on and no one out. A lot of things to think about. Just how would you set it up for Mantle uh, with a surprise attempt to bunt? And here's Maris with that wide open territory down. Uh, Davenport is in close like he's halfway expecting to bunt. If Maris would just push the ball, we'll have to see some real scooting and scamping around here. They do have the shift on, Judge. Mantle at first base. Trash at second. No one out here in the bottom of the fourth inning. The Giants lead one to nothing. Maris fly to left field his first time at bat. Jack gets ready. The pitch. Ball outside. Barley started to go up with the right hand. You can see the pitch was very close. And Sanford thought it should have been a strike. One ball, no strike. Boy, Sanford has done a great job in this series. 
hitting that outside corner against these big left-handed batters, especially when he was behind on a ball two and a no-strike count. Here's the pitch to Raj. Curveball outside, ball two and a strike. He's starting to hang his curveball just a bit. The curveball of Mantle, the one he walked, was high. This one hung. Uh, Haller went out just handed him the ball. Pagan is going in to talk to him. And there's nothing more than just trying to break the mood of the mound. Well, this is a big pitch right here, Joe, for Jack Sanford. He has two on with no one out. He's behind Maris with a ball two and a no-strike count. And just hung a curveball. What do you do if you're Haller? Do you call for the fastball against a good fastball hitter? Well, we'll know. Here it is. Fastball outside. 3-0 to Maris. Jack was trying to hit the corner. And look at that Maris, George. He's looking at Corsetti as if he's saying, please let me hit. Well, we'll find out if the hit sign is on. Raj is right down on the end of the bat. A ball three and a no-strike count. The runners edge off. Here's the pitch. Strike. He got the fastball over. Three and one, Damaris. Raj was taking on it. Gave no indication he was going to swing. Hey, one thing, it was not right down the middle. He got it a little bit on the outside part of the plate, around the knees. Sanford looking in. Here's the pitch, Damaris. He swings and hits a bouncer to McCovey. He's going to second for one out. Back to first. He is safe at first base. And a good play at first base by Sanford, who had to make a diving stop of Pagan's throw. Willie McCovey, trying to make the double play, fired the ball down to Pagan. Easy out on Mantle, but the relay back to first base with Sanford covering was wide of the back, and Sanford had to make a diving stop. So the Yankees have runners at first and third with one out, and the batter will be Elston Howard. third base, Roger Maris at first. Howard struck out his first time at bat. Elston stands deep in the batter's box and about as far away from the plate as any batter in the series. Sanford checks the runners, the pitch. There's a swing and a miss. He got the fastball by him. One strike to Howard. One run on three hits and two errors for the Giants. The Yankees have no runs on two hits, and they have no errors. Sanford taking a little time as he looks around. He's in a tough spot here in the fourth inning. Here's the pitch. Curve down low. One and one to Howard. Tom Trash opened this inning with a pop fly double in the shallow center field. Mickey Mantle drew a walk. Roger Maris then slammed the ground ball to McCovey, who threw down to second for the force out on Mantle. Now it's one ball, one strike count to Elston Howard. Sanford gets set. Now he steps off, bluffing Maris back to first base, and as he does, Elston Howard gets out. Giant infield back for the double play, with the exception of McCovey, who's holding against the runner at first. Here's the 1-1 pitch. He swings and misses, but the curve by him around the knees. One ball and two strikes to Howard. Sanford really surveying before he makes his pitch, and he could go to one more. He's been moving the right-hand hitters back with the fastball and then snapping that outside corner with the curveball. And he's in a good shape right now with the two-strike, one-ball count and set up the 2-2 pitch. He's ready again. Here it is. A swing and a miss. He struck him out. Elston Howard strikes out on a high fastball, so there's two down, and the batter will be Bill Scarron. With a big strikeout for Sanford. Relieves the pressure a little bit. Still two on with two outs. Scarron struck out his first time at bat. It's easy to see how this Sanford won 24 ball games. There's a quick throw to first. Maris back in town. 
He just pitches his own game. He doesn't let the hitters or the situation uh, change his pattern. He pitches his game. He won't give in to him. The pitch to Scarron. It's in the dirt. It gets away from the catcher. Here's a run coming in. The throw to the plate is not in time. Charged against Sanford as the curveball bounced in front of the plate, skipped away from Haller, and Trash comes in to score as the Yankees finally break through in the scoring column against Sanford in this World Series. It's all tied, one run apiece. Maris moves down to second. Jack Sanford getting set again. Here's the pitch. Curve, it's in there, right at the knees. One ball, one strike. The Giants won, the Yankees won in the bottom of the fourth. The Yankees have a runner at second base with two outs. Sanford very much disgusted with himself as he covered home plate on that one. He saw he had no chance to get Tresh. Just slammed the ball into his glove. There's a pass ball high and inside. Scarron has to get out of the way. Ball two and strike one. Double, a walk, a ground ball, and a wild pitch getting a run in here in the fourth. A 1-1 ball game. Here's the pitch to Scarron. He swings and misses. Curve ball around the knees. The count is even at 2-2. Two two. The Giants play Scarron a little bit to right field. Here's the 2-2 pitch. A curveball, he struck him out. Scourin goes down swinging. One run on one hit in the inning. No errors, one man left, and the score at the end of four, the Giants won, the Yankees won. We'll be back with more exciting action from the fifth game of the 1962 World Series after this. And now, more action from game five of the 1962 World Series. Hi, baby. Which one is he? Hi. This one with no hair. Looks quite a bit like me, but <laughs> the no hair part does. But he looked like a 38-year-old uncle. Life will be changed again. Yeah, I suppose. He looks so helpless. Okay. Yeah. Have you got new insurance? No, not new insurance, but I adjusted our policy. Just I have an adjustable life insurance. The amount of coverage? Sure, the coverage or the premium, term, whatever. Just, well, this, this baby, when the last baby was born, I did the same thing, just adjusted it. When I bought my house, when, when we started the business, I just pick up the phone and say, hey, Mr. Banker's life, adjust my policy. But any significant change I've had in my life, I just buy a new policy. Well, that's typical. I have a collection. That's a, a, well, I, I used to, too. He's smiling at me. He's smiling at that's gas. Adjustable <laughs> life insurance from the Banker's Life of Des Moines. As your life changes, you can change how much insurance you've got or how much you pay without adding policies. You simply adjust your policy as your needs change. In life, you've got to adjust. The Banker's Life of Des Moines. We're in the Yellow Pages. And now, more action from Game 5 of the 1962 World Series. Well, we move along. A 1-1 ball game as we go into the top of the fifth inning. One run, three hits, and two errors for the Giants. The Yankees, one run on two hits, and they have no errors. Jose Pagan will lead it off for the Giants in the fifth inning. He'll be followed by Sanford and then Chuck Keller. Pagan singled in the third and scored the Giants' run, coming around on a double by Hiller. Right-handed batter facing the right-hander, Ralph Terry. Here's the first pitch. Strike, fastball over the outside corner. A one-strike count. Jose out of the box for just a moment. He's checking with Boyer at third base. Boy, if Cleet moves back a couple of steps, he's going to be bunning. Here's the pitch. He swings and hits a long belt to left field. It's well hit. This one is going. It's gone. A home run. Got a high 
high curveball and drove it deep into the lower deck and left field. And the Giants have taken a two to one lead. Jack Sanford, the batter. Jack sacrificed his first time at bat. He swings and pops it up on the infield. Bobby Richardson at second base is waiting on it. He's got it, there's one away. Sanford swinging on the first pitch, pops to second base. Bring up the second baseman, Chuck Heller. Nice round of applause for Sanford as he goes back to the dugout. A lot of giant fans here at Yankee Stadium this afternoon. Here's Hiller. He walked in the first inning. Drove a double to left field in the third. Drove in a run. Ralph Terry delivers a curve outside. One ball or no strikes. It was the Giants two and the Yankees one. We're in the top of the fifth inning. Here's the one and no pitch. Strike a fastball right down the middle. One ball, one strike. Miller, a little left-handed batter, chokes the bat. The pitch. He swings and lands it straight to the first baseman. Bill Scarron taking the line shot off the bat of Chuck Heller. It's two down, and the batter will be Jimmy Davenport. Jimmy struck out in the first inning. Bounced to third base in the third. with no one on here in the fifth inning. Terry delivers. Ball down low. One ball, no strikes. Jimmy Davenport waiting on Ralph Terry. Here's the one and no pitch. Strike. That was a slider. Caught the outside corner. One of the few sliders that Terry has delivered today. And throwing mostly slow curves. A few fast curves and the good live fastball. Here's the 1-1 pitch. Curveball, he bounces it foul down the third baseline. Whitey Lockman coming over to pick it up. One ball and two strikes. Jose Pagan opened this inning with a long home run into the left field seats. Sanford popped to second. Killer lined to the first baseman. Terry gets ready. Here's the 1-2 pitch. A swing and a miss. He struck him out. Jimmy Davenport strikes out. One run on one hit. No errors, no one left. And the score at the end of the first half of the fifth inning, the Giants two and the Yankees one. Game five of the World Series of 1962 continues after this. Listening to a classic World Series from the archives of NBC Radio Sports. Game 5 of the World Series of 1962. Well, we move along into the bottom of the fifth inning. The Giants out in front by a score of 2-1. to one. Cleet Boyer will be the leadoff man for the Yankees. He'll be followed by Ralph Terry and then Tony Kubek. Boyer bounced to the shortstop his first time at bat. Sanford gets ready. Here's the pitch. Curveball. It's in there. One strike. Boyer started to swing, held up. Al Barlick said it caught the corner. Well, the Giants got one in the third, one in the fifth. The Yankees picked up one in the fourth inning. Here's the pitch to Cleet. Outside, a fastball off the corner. 
One ball, one strike. Little Jose Pagan has been the hitting hero for the Giants in this game. He singled and scored the first run. And he hit a home run to break a 1-1 tie here in the top of the fifth inning. Here's the pitch to Boyer. He swings and misses. Cleet was trying to hit that one into right field as Sanford is getting the fastball over the outside corner. Cleet was going to try to drive it down the right field line. One ball, two strikes. Sanford delivers a curve. He bounces it down the first baseline. McCovey flips it over to Sanford. He's out. Willie McCovey moving in to pick up the bouncing ball. Flips it over to Jack Sanford, who's covering the bag. And Cleet Boyer is out number one. We'll bring up the pitcher, Ralph Terry. Ralph was a strikeout victim his first time at bat. Al Barlick to have a look at the baseball. Jack tosses it in, and Al says we'll put a new baseball into play. I think Terry might have been uh, pitching with that ball a little, Joe, and he knows something. You've seen that happen a hundred times, where it's all right when you got that ball and you're pitching it, and then you come in, the first thing you do is tell your hitter that leads off the inning, take a look at that baseball. But, uh, Boyer didn't look at it, but Terry made sure that Boyer, Barlick would give it a real quick check. They don't mind throwing that dirty baseball. They don't like to hit at it, do they? <laughs> no, sir. Well, we're ready to go. Sanford into the windup. Here's the pitch. He swings and misses. Boy, Sanford is not playing fair with Terry at all. He's throwing him nothing but curveballs. And a hard curveball. It's not a big roundhouse, slow-breaking curveball. It's a real good snapper. Here's the one-strike pitch. Fastball up high. One and one to Ralph. We're in the bottom of the fifth inning. There's one out with no one on. The Giants lead the Yankees 2-1. to one. Ralph Terry standing in. One ball, one strike. Here's the pitch. A swing and a foul. This one back on the screen. One ball, two strikes. Giants scored in the third to go out in front, one to nothing. The Yankees tied it in the fourth, and Pagan hit a home run here in the top of the fifth to put the Giants in front. Here's a curve down low, two and two to Terry. That's the pitch the Yankees have been swinging at today, the low curveball, but Terry laid off this one. The Giants have out hit the Yankees four to two. Here's the pitch. A ground foul down the first baseline. Still two and two to Terry. Well, tomorrow's an off day. Everybody moving back to San Francisco. Game number six will be played at Candlestick Park on Friday. And game number seven, if necessary, will be played on San uh, Saturday at Candlestick Park. Jack Sanford checking the sign. Here's the 2-2 pitch. He's swinging a miss. He struck him out. Terry goes down swinging. Strikeout number six for Jack Sanford. Two away, and the batter will be Tony Kubek. Sanford struck out six in the ball game. He shut him out, George. So, apparently, he's got as good as stuff, if not better. I kind of think one thing that the Yankee hitters are doing is they didn't do a candlestick. They're chasing the bad ball. So, Sanford has a bigger strike uh, zone, let's put it that way, to work with. Here's the pitch to Kubek. He swings and fouls it back. One strike to Tony. He singled in the first inning, popped to the shortstop in the third. It could be, Joe, that the background here, well, it is much tougher than it is in Candlestick Park, is one of the reasons for swinging at so many bad pitches. You pick the ball up, but then you lose it when it starts to break, and uh, we're swinging at the bad curves. The right-hand hitters seem to be losing it from the middle of the plate out. Sanford into the windup. The pitch to Tony. Strike two. He got the fastball over. A strike two count. Tony Kubek, the batter, in the bottom of the fifth inning with two outs and no one on. The Giants leading two to one. Sanford into the windup. The pitch. Curveball. He bounces it foul down the first baseline. Still strike two. 
Well, you talk about confusion, Joe. Do you think there might have been a little confusion at the airlines yesterday with all the cancellations and uh, changing tickets around? Everybody ready to move out last night? Boy, I'd say there was confusion beginning right here, and I don't know where it ended up, if it's ended at all, because everybody was really hopping around here. The poor clubhouse, man, they didn't know what to do. How about the hotels where everybody checked out and then racing back? Here's the pitch. A swing and a miss. He struck him out on a bad pitch. Tony Kubek goes down swinging. No runs, no hits, no errors, no one left. And the score at the end of five, the Giants two, the Yankees one. Back with more action from this classic World Series game of 1962 after this. We're here at Nick's Health Spa with a new Canon NP400F system copier. Nick, people exercise here? Yes, reduce, reduce, and enlarge the muscle tone. Ah, that's exactly what the Canon NP400F does, and more. It enlarges the muscle tone? No, no. It has two reduction modes and one enlargement mode. Watch. These diet plans are ledger size. We can reduce them to legal, even down to letter size. At 40 letter size copies a minute, the NP400F is the fastest compact system copier. Looks like a pretty fit machine. Ah, uh, that's because it's a desktop copier. It also feeds and has an optional sorter. So if you want to reduce, reduce, or enlarge your copies, this machine can do it? Yes, it also feeds, speeds, and sorts. I bet it don't sweat. No, it don't sweat. Uh, want to see if I could pick it up? No. The Canon NP400F, the fastest compact system copier. Micronics makes it simple. NBC Radio is presenting a rebroadcast of Game 5 of the 1962 World Series. The San Francisco Giants versus the New York Yankees. Well, at the end of five, the Giants have two runs on four hits and they've made two errors. The Yankees have one run on two hits and they have no errors. Matty Alou will be the leadoff man for San Francisco. He'll be followed by Willie Mays and then Willie McCovey. Matty struck out in the first inning. In the third inning, he bounced to the shortstop, Kubek. Matty, a left-handed batter. Terry ready. Here's the first pitch. He bunts down the first baseline. Scourin moves in, picks it up, steps on the bag. Well, the only way they could get him there, he bunted the ball right to Scourin, who fielded the ball standing on the bag. If he'd had to move a couple of steps, a Lou would have been on. That's one away, and the batter will be Willie Mays. Willie has lined to left and struck out in two trips. Mays still a great favorite here in New York. Terry delivers a curve down low. One ball, no strikes. We're in the top of the sixth inning. The Giants lead two to one. Terry into the windup, the pitch. He swings and hits a fly ball into center field. Mantle going back, back. He's there, makes the catch. The ball was hit a long way into straightaway center field. Two down, and the batter will be Willie McCovey. Mantle had to travel some 400 feet to get that one. Here's McCovey, who struck out in the second inning. Bounce to the second baseman in the fourth inning. Big left-handed batter. Terry delivers a curve down low. One ball, no strike. Without using the shift, the Yankees are about as far over as they can get. Then Richardson way over on the grass. Gowan guards the line. Kubat just about the behind the back at second base. They play McCovey to really pull. There's another curve down low. It's ball two and no strikes. Terry trying to get McCovey to swing in a bad curveball, maybe beat it into the dirt. Willie says you've got to come in with it, Ralph. Here's the 2-0 and pitch. There's another curve. It's in there. Slow curveball that just floated over the plate. Ralph has pulled a string on some curves today, but he almost held that one as it just floated up there. Like it had a string on the end of it, and he just yanked it back. You think McCovey would have had a pretty good cut at the fastball, John? I believe he was ready, Joe. <laughs> Here's the 2-1 pitch. Fastball hit deep to right field. Maris going back. He's got the room on it. And 
makes the catch. Willie McCovey flying to Maris in right field. A runs, no hits, no errors, no one left. And the score at the end of the first half of the sixth inning, the Giants two and the Yankees one. This original 1962 World Series broadcast will continue on the NBC radio network. When you're faced with tedious grass trimming chores, stand up to your lawn with a weed eater trimmer from True Value Hardware Stores. Hi, Pat Summerall to tell you the Snippy model is the ideal choice for average lawns because it quickly trims a 10-inch path and weighs just three and a half pounds for less tiring operation. For larger jobs, get the weed eater needy trimmer that trims and sweeps a 16-inch path. Both of these time and work savers feature tap-and-go heads and are available at participating True Value hardware stores and home centers. NBC Radio Sports is presenting a classic World Series broadcast. Game 5 of 1962, featuring superstars Mickey Mantle, Roger Maris, Willie Mays, and Willie McCovey. Well, it's the bottom of the sixth inning. The Giants lead 2-1. to one. Bobby Richardson will lead off for the Yankees. He'll be followed by Tommy Trash and then Mickey Mantle. Sanford ready, and here's the first pitch. A ground ball hit slowly down the third baseline. Sanford has it. Here's the throw. He is safe at first base. Bobby Richardson topped one down the third baseline. Sanford hustled off the mound, picked it up, seemed to lose his balance a little bit. Then he had to make an off-balance throw to McCovey, and it was too late to get Bobby Richardson. It'll be an infield single. It's a runner at first base with no one out. And the batter will be Tommy Trash. Trash lined to the pitcher in the first inning, lined into a double play as Sanford speared his line drive. In the fourth inning, he doubled and scored the lone Yankee run. The Giants are looking for the bunt. Davenport is in close at third base. Sanford gets set. There's a quick throw to first. Richardson back in time. That was hit number three off Sanford. The Giants have picked up four off Ralph Terry. Another throw to first. A lot of times you'll ask your pitcher to throw over to first base, hoping that at the first movement the hitter will tip his hands because instinctively he'll slide him up if he's bunting. Tresh gave no indication he would be bunting, so he's doing a good job. Here's the pitch. Wall down low. I mean, squared around, as Joe said, while he was throwing to first, he gave no indication. But as Sanford delivered to the plate, Tresh squared around, ready to bunt, took the fastball down low. One ball, no strikes. When you've got batters like Mantle and Maris coming up and you're one run behind, I guess you've got to give them a chance, Joe, with that bunt. You've got to get those cannons up there. Here's the 1-0 pitch. He bunts it is foul. This one up in the air, coming back on the screen. One ball, one strike. He's going to have to bunt down the first baseline unless it's a real good one because Davenport is right in on top of him. Sanford's not giving him a good ball to bunt in real high, riding hard fastball, and Trash batting left hand will really have to tilt that bat to get it down to McCovey, who takes old Willie a little bit of time to get started at first base. We're getting action in the bullpen for the Giants. Don Larson, a big right-hander, is throwing. Here's the pitch. Trash bunts down the first baseline. It's a good one. McCovey bobbles it. Here's the throw. He is out on a close play. Willie McCovey bobbled the ball for just a moment, quickly picked it up and threw to Hiller in time to get Tommy Trash. Richardson moves to second on the sacrifice. One out, and the batter is Mickey Mantle. Mantle has been on twice today. Safe on an error in the first inning. He walked in the fourth. The Giants are leading 2-1. to one. We're in the bottom of the sixth inning. The tying run for the Yankees at second base with one out. Giants deep 
and around to the right for Mickey, who's batting left-handed against the right-hander, Jack Sanford. Here's the first pitch. Strike the overhand curveball in with the knees. Well, the giant pitchers in this World Series have made some great pitches on Mantle. They've been getting the curveball around the knees. They've been keeping the fastball on the outside part of the plate. Absolutely nothing here in Yankee Stadium that he can pull. Sanford gets set. Here's the pitch. Outside. One ball, one strike. Mickey, of course, is looking for something from the center of the plate to the inside part. And he can get around on and pull toward these friendly right field seats. It's only 296 right down the line. Moves out to 344 directly behind the outfielder. A very inviting target for these left-handed batters. And the same goes for the Giants. Willie McCovey especially. Tom Haller. Here's the 1-1 pitch. Mickey swings and hits a bouncing ball to second base. Hiller has it to throw to McCovey. He's out. Mantle goes out second to first as Roger Maris becomes the batter. A runner at third base and two outs. Maris has fly to left and bounced to the first baseman in two trips. Tom Haller, Joe, going out to the mound now. He's got to remind Sanford to make sure that Maris pulls that ball. You can't give him a ball that he can handle where he can punch it through the shortstop spot because they're going into the shift again, and Haller, impressing, I'm sure, on Sanford's mind, make sure that he has a tough ball to handle if he wants to go that way. We've got to make sure he pulls that ball because everybody's on that the right side. Shortstop spot is vacated, and with Richardson at third, third base, all they need is a little squib round ball, and it's through, and a big-time run would score. Let's see what happens, George. A runner at third base with two outs. Sanford pitching from the stretch. Now, wait a minute. He's stepping off. It could be that he forgot there. Looked like he was going to try to hold Richardson close, but as soon as he went into the stretch, he stepped off the rubber. Sometimes a pitcher will do this. Just forgetting that he doesn't have a runner at first base. Here's the pitch to Maris. Strike the fastball on the outside corner. Well, that was a pitch for Raj to punch through that hole as Sanford threaded a needle on the outside part of the play. They're daring, Maris. No doubt about that. Raj right down on the end of the bat. The tying run is at third base with two outs. Took off two signs. Allard started a new sequence, and Maris backed out now. And for taking a little time, gets ready. Here's the pitch. Outside. Maris was ready to bunt. He was going to push one. The pitch was way outside. One ball, one strike. Rod's trying to figure out a way to get this tying run in. The Giants are leading 2-1. to one. Giants really gambling, and Maris will be up to the pull that ball. The first two pitches have been outside. Here's the 1-1 pitch. Outside again, a pass ball off the corner. Joe, they're not only playing him far to right field, but they're pitching him outside, really giving him something he can hit through the hole. They had uh, just determined that uh, Maris will not change his swing and try to pull that ball, so the tough ball to pull is uh, one that would be easy to send through the slot. Here's the 2-1 pitch. A swing and a foul. Here's a, no, it's a, not a foul. Here's a run coming in. He is safe at the plate. The ball popped out of the mid of Haller and rolled behind the plate. Richardson raced in. Haller picked it up through to Sanford. A very close play at the plate. And Barlick has ruled him safe. And Haller and Sanford are protesting the call. Sanford thought he had him. It'll be a pass ball charged against Haller. And here's Dart coming out. It looked like a foul tip that popped off the mitt of Haller. But Barlick quickly gave the sign he did not foul the ball. And Richardson... Very alert at third base, took the sign and raced in. Haller made a quick recovery, threw the ball to Sanford, who put the tag on Bobby, but it was too late. So we have a brand new ball game. It's all tied at 2 2. A pass ball charged against Tom Haller, the first Yankee run in this game, coming on a wild pitch. 
Dark now leaving the mound. He's just trying to settle his pitcher down because uh, both runs have scored one a wild pitch in the pass ball, but in this inning, George, not a ball has left the infield. A little squibber down the third base line by Richardson. He beat it out. A sacrifice by Fresh. A ground ball by Mantle moved Richardson to third, and now the pass ball, and that ball hadn't gone more than four or five feet from home plate, and they've tied it up. WTMJ Milwaukee. I believe Joey crossed him up. I think he was looking for the curveball. He got the fastball. That's why it popped out of his mitt. Could have been that. Here's the 2-2 pitch to Maris. He swings and hits a ground ball to second base. Hiller makes a good play. The throw to first. He's out. Roger Maris goes out second to first. One run on one hit. There were no errors. No one left. And the score at the end of six. The Giants two and the Yankees two. We back with more exciting action from the fifth game of the 1962 World Series after this. A lot of good people work for commercial credit. That's what makes commercial credit work. I remember once a man and his wife came to me and their son had fallen through a plate glass window. They had no insurance. The medical bills were piling up and they could not get along. And we talked uh, for over two hours. They expressed sincerity to me. He uh, was a good, hard-working man, raising a family, and they needed help. And we helped them, which proves a point, I think, about commercial credit. Because on paper, they did not look like a good credit risk. We gave them the loan they needed. They knew that I cared about their problem because obviously anybody that has kids can relate to the way they felt. Their son came home in uh, two weeks, and uh, they've been friends of mine ever since. People with care and confidence. And now, more action from Game 5 of the 1962 World Series. Well, a 2-2 ball game as we go into the seventh inning. The Giants have two runs on four hits. They've made two errors. And the Yankees have two runs on three hits, and they have no errors. Well, a double and a home run getting the two giant runs in, and the Yankees have scored on a wild pitch and a pass ball. Philippe Alou will lead off for the Giants in the seventh inning. He'll be followed by Tom Haller and then Jose Pagan. Here's the pitch. A ground ball up the middle. Quebec racing over. He can't get it. It'll be a single for Alou. He's going to try for two, but now he goes back as Mantle hustles the ball in. Philippe took a big turn. Mantle racing in, picks the ball up, and sends Philippe right back to first base. So the lead run at first base with no one out here in the seventh inning. And the batter is Tom Haller. called as Jansen comes up with a few words of advice for Haller. Tommy has bounced to second and lined a ride in two trips. Jerry gets set. Here's the pitch. Curve ball. It's in there. One strike to Haller. The hit by Alou was number five off Terry. They've out hit the Yankees five to three. Terry ready. The pitch. Here's a long drive. If it stays fair, it is a foul ball to Ken Burkhart. As Tom Haller has driven one deep into the right field seat. Just fouled by a few feet. You could see that Elston Howard didn't particularly like that pitch. He's out there talking to Terry. It was a belt-high fastball inside part of the plate, and then Howard really got around on it. He's trying to pull that ball all the way, hoping he can get a first and third situation with the base hit to right field. And Howard out now talking to Terry and actually follows him right to the mound to complete the conversation. Here's the attendance today, just announced. 63,165. 63,165, the paid attendance here today. A two-strike count to Tom Haller. Terry delivers. There's a high pop fly down the third baseline. Boyer chasing it in foul territory, and he makes the catch, a one-handed catch. 
by Cleet Boyer, and he almost made a wild throw to second base. Boyer fired the ball to Richardson as he thought a Lou was going down, and Bobby had to leap high into the air to get it. So Haller is out on the foul fly. There's one away, and the batter will be Jose Pagan. Pagan has been the hitting hero for the Giants. He singled and scored a run in the third inning. And in the fifth inning, he hit a home run that broke the 1-1 tie. Twice in this ball game, the Giants have gone in front. These Giants would like to get Stanford up there, and they've got good speed on the bases. And Philippe Ballou, this fellow can handle that bat, so it's not without the possibility of putting a play on as far as Alvin Dart is concerned. Terry checks his runner. The pitch to Pagan. Here's a fly ball hit down the left field line. Terry, uh, trash racing in. Kubek is there, and Kubek makes the catch. Jose Pagan pulled one down the left field line, just outside the line. Boyer, Trash, and Kubek all there, and Kubek made the catch. So there's two down, and the batter will be Jack Sanford. Listen to the applause for Sanford as he comes on. Sacrifice in the third inning. In the fifth inning, he popped the second baseman. 0 for 1 officially. Terry delivers a curve. It's up high. One ball, no strike. It's that high curve ball again, Joe, and Jack was ready for it. Hey, you throw that country boy that high curve ball, and he's going to get you a top limb. A runner at first base with two outs here in the seventh inning. Here's the pitch. A ground ball up the middle. It's into center field. Alou makes a big turn. He's on his way to third. Mantle's throw will come to second base. Jack Sanford. A ground ball up the middle into center field. Alou racing to third. So the Giants have runners at first and third with two outs. And the batter will be Chuck Hiller. has been a tough man for Terry. He walked in the first, doubled and drove in a run in the third, and he lined hard to Scourin in the fifth inning. Here's the pitch. Ball up high. One ball and no strike. Bud Daly, a left-hander, is throwing in the bullpen for the Yankees. Giants are threatening here in the seventh inning. It's a 2-2 ball game. They have runners at first and third with two out. Here's the one and no pitch. A ground ball right back to the mound. Terry has it to go to first. He's out. Miller goes out, pitcher to first. No runs on two hits. There are two men left and the score at the end of the first half of the seventh inning. The Giants two and the Yankees two. Game five of the World Series of 1962 continues after this. Maybe it's just cold, Gordon. It's not cold. It's old. I should have traded it in last year. Well, why don't we trade it in right now? Now? Have you seen how high the prime rate is? It'll start. If the bank prime rate is keeping you out of a new car, ask your GM dealer about GMAC. GMAC has financing right now at rates that make sense. So get that new Chevy, Pontiac, Olds, Buick, Cadillac, or GMC truck you want with help from GMAC, the financing people from General Motors. Listening to a classic World Series from the archives of NBC Radio Sports. Game five of the World Series of 1962. George, all tied up here, 2 2, and been a lot of plays, uh, wild pitches, pass balls, and some base hits that the official scores have had to rule on, and we'd like to give credit to them. The official scores for the ball game Bob Stevens of the San Francisco Chronicle, Silver Denzi of the New York Journal American, and Ray Kelly of the Philadelphia Bulletin. And three busy guys out here this afternoon. All right, Joe. 
Well, we move into the bottom of the seventh inning. It's all tied at 2-2. Elston Howard will lead off for the Yankees. He'll be followed by Bill Scourn, then Cletus Boyer. Jack Sanford delivers a curve. It's lined down the left field line. It is foul. Back into the crowd. Elston Howard caught the curveball and lined it deep to left, but he pulled it foul. Howard's been to the plate twice. He struck out both times against Sanford. Here's the pitch. Down low. One ball, one strike. Sanford has seven strikeouts in this ball game, and six of those seven coming against three batters. He has Howard twice, Scourin twice, and Ralph Terry twice. Tony Kubek was the seventh strikeout victim. Sanford looks in. Here's the 1-1 pitch. Inside, a fastball too tight. Ball two and strike one. We're in the bottom of the seventh inning. The Giants two and the Yankees two in this all-important fifth game. Here's the 2-1 pitch. Strike two. He got the fastball over. The count is even at two and two to Howard. Kelly protesting just a little bit to Al Barlick about the call on that one. Giants have out hit the Yankees six to three. Here's the pitch. Outside. And now it is Sanford that is hollering. He wanted that pitch as he got the curveball. He thought over the outside corner, and Barlick says a little bit outside, so it's three and two. You can see that Howard and Sanford both uh, using the pattern. Uh, they're going to go by the same pitching pattern that they've been using until Howard shows them he can hit it. And they went with a fastball inside and a curveball. And how you lay off that pitch, you wonder, but it's apparently outside because Howard was sure it was outside. He laid off completely. And Al Barlick, the plate umpire, didn't hesitate. And he called it ball three right now. A full count to the leadoff man. Kelly right down on the end of the bat waiting. Here's the pitch. Foul ball back on the screen, and that was a bad pitch. High and inside. Howard was trying to get out of the way of it, and the ball hit his bat. He's a bit disgusted now. as uh, He was leaning, George. I'd almost... Well, you won't know until you ask him, but I'd bet my bottom dollar he was looking for a breaking ball. Because he was going in, and it was way high under his chin, and his bat had already started forward. Still three and two to Elston Howard. Sanford into the windup. Here's the pitch. A ground ball hit to the shortstop. Pagan has it. Here's the throw to first. He's out. Howard goes out. Short to first. It's one away, and the batter will be Bill Scarron. The Moose has been to the plate twice, and he struck out both times. Sanford has been a tough man on these big right-handed batters. Joe told you, keeping the curveball low and on the outside part of the plate. Here's the pitch. A swing and a miss. He got the fastball by him. One strike. Bottom of the seventh inning. One out with no one on. The Giants two and the Yankees two. Here's the pitch. Curveball. It's in there. Strike two to Bill Scarra. Getting a little cloudy and overcast here at Yankee Stadium. A big black cloud hovering over the stadium. We still have a little sunlight as the sun peeks in and out every now and then. No rain forecast for this area today. Here's the two-strike pitch. In the dirt. Scooped up by Heller. One ball, two strikes. Cletus Boyer waiting in the on-deck circle. taking a little time, looking into Haller. It's the 1-2 pitch. Curve down low, trying to get the moose to go for the bad curve ball. The count is even at 2-2. Two and two. The two Yankee runs in this game, one coming on a wild pitch, another on a pass ball. They have been having trouble with Jack Sanford. There's a curve in the dirt. 
Three and two to Bill Scarn. That Howler has been in the dirt all afternoon. Uh, when that ball hits the dirt, especially a curveball, the spin will carry it uh, in an opposite direction. Sanford will break back towards the plate, and all you can do is get in front of it and, and hope that the ball stays near you. Moose right down on the end of the bat, waiting. Here's the pitch. It's swinging a miss. He struck him out. Sanford coming in with a curveball again, and Scourin strikes out. That's number eight for Jack. There's two down, and the batter will be Boyer. Waiters Boyer has bounced the shortstop into the first baseman in two trips. The pitch is in the dirt. One ball, no strike. Sanford having a little trouble with his curveball here. He's bounced a few up the inning, but he got the 3-2 curve over to Scourin when he had to get it over. Sanford into the windup. The 1-0 and pitch. Outside, another curve breaking down and away. Ball two and a strike. George, it looks like when he wants to put that extra on the curveball, he seems to hold on to it just a little bit longer and works it right into the ground. If he throws his normal curveball, he's been getting it in a pretty good spot. Jack wants to start over on the signs, as he indicates to Tom Haller. He didn't like that one. Here's the 2-0 pitch. A swing and a miss. That's ball around the letters. Ball two and strike one. Jim Davenport, the third baseman, is playing deep at third and only about a step from the line as he doesn't want Boyer to hit a ground ball by him into the corner and put the lead run at second base. He's willing to give up a ground ball single to his left. That would only put the lead run at first base with two out. Holler calling time as he goes out to the mound. He's got an option on Boyer. Free chase to high fastball, he can go that way. Stay with the fastball, or he's been having trouble all day with the curveball, so Haller just wants to make sure how Sanford is feeling. Pagan wants some glasses, and time is being called as the bat boy runs him out. The sun has been seeping in and out here, and right now it's going behind the clouds, so Pagan won't need him right at this instant, but it's been out bright, goes back in, and it's better to have than to fight that sun, lose that ball. Well, the Yankees and the Giants all tied at 2-2 here in the bottom of the seventh inning. A ball two, strike one count to Cletus Boyer. Here's the pitch. A swing and a miss. He plays the fastball by him. Two and two to Boyer. Sanford and Terry locked in another duel. They pitched in the second game of this World Series, and Sanford won it two to nothing. And they're right back at it this afternoon, tied 2-2. Here's the pitch. Curve outside. Three and two to Boyer. Sanford has been three two on every batter this inning. Throwing a lot of pitches here late in the ball game. A pitch to Cleet. A swing and a miss. at the end of the seven full innings to play. The Yankees, two, and the Giants, two. Back with more action from this classic World Series game of 1962 after this. Hi, Mom. I thought we'd better get an early start for that garage sale. Afraid I'm not going, Judy. But why, Mom? Oh, I've got a nagging backache. Oh. You see, I started cleaning the house for the party next week, and... Uh... And you overexerted yourself, right? Oh, I guess. Why don't I get you some Doan's pills? I'm sure they'll help you. Downs pills, of course. Now, why didn't I think of that? Good advice. Downs pills. It saved the day for thousands of people with simple nagging backache pain. Taken as directed, this time-proven analgesic brings temporary relief of minor backache pain brought on by overexertion, stress, or strain. Downs pills. It brings the kind of welcome relief you may need. Hello? Feeling better, Mom? Just like my old self again. Those Doan's pills are such a comfort. The garage sale's still on. Want to go now? Love to. Get Doan's pills and get the better of a backache due to simple overexertion, stress, or strain. Available at drug counters or your favorite supermarket. Use only as directed. 
NBC Radio is presenting a rebroadcast of Game 5 of the 1962 World Series, the San Francisco Giants versus the New York Yankees. At the end of seven, the Giants have two runs on six hits, and they've made two errors. The Yankees have two runs on three hits, and they have no errors. Jim Davenport to lead off for San Francisco. He'll be followed by Matty Alou and then Willie Mays. Jimmy's 0 for 3, struck out twice and bounced to third base today. Boyer's going to play in close for checking against the bunt. Here's the pitch. Curveball inside. One ball, no strike. Ralph Terry, all the way for the Yankees. Jack Sanford for the Giants. There's a curve outside. 2-0 to Davenport. A ball two and a no-strike count. Howard taking a little time, stepped out in front of the plate and fired the ball back to Ralph Terry. We're in the top of the eighth inning. We're all tied at 2-2. Here's the pitch. He swings and misses. Last ball around the letters. A ball two and a strike one count. Yankees play Davenport straight away and not too deep. Scourin and Boyer in a couple of steps. Here's a fastball too high. Three and one to Davenport. Jimmy checking with Whitey Lockman, the coach at third base, to see if the hip sign is on. Here's the 3-1 pitch. Right down the middle of the fastball. Davenport was taking all the way. A ball three and a strike two count. Jimmy trying to work his way on there. Giants have their big guns coming up. Here's a 3-2 pitch. A swing and a miss. He struck him out. Davenport strikes out. George, neither pitcher giving in to the hitters. That was a 3-2 curveball, even though it was the leadoff, man, and you could just picture ahead what could possibly happen if Davenport got on the bunt by Matty Alou to move over, made him McCovey and Philippe to drive him in. Yet Terry went right to the curveball and came across with a real good pitch. Both Sanford and Terry had tremendous ball game out here. Matty Alou, the batter. He struck out, bounced to short, and bunted to the first baseman in three trips. Little left-handed batter. This fellow can really fly down that first baseline. Terry delivers a fastball up high. One ball and no strikes. Bud Daly, a left-hander, still throwing in the bullpen for the Yankees. Here's the one and no pitch. Slow curve. Too high. Ball two and no strikes. Still playing in close against the Lou. Matty slapped one by him here in a pinch hitting roll on Monday. Here's the 2 0 pitch. He swings and fouls it back. This one's on the screen. Ball two and strike one. Well, the scoring in this ball game, the Giants picked up one in the third. The Yankees tied it in the fourth. The Giants got one in the fifth to go in front two to one. And the Yankees tied it in the sixth inning. Alou, the batter. A ball, two, and a strike one count. Terry ready. Here's the pitch. A curveball hit foul down the third baseline. Boy, Matty waited on that curve and drilled it foul just outside the line. Boyer, as you mentioned, is challenging Alou, and Alou is coming up to the challenge. That's a little curveball. He's just trying to slap it by him. Now Boyer's dropped back again with a two-strike count, and he's a little bit wider at third base, but he's back. waiting on Terry. Here's the 2-2 pitch. Foul ball back on the screen. Terry trying to get the fastball by him on the 2-2 pitch. There's one out with no one on here in the eighth inning. The Giants two and the Yankees two. Tomorrow's an off day. We'll be in Candlestick Park in San Francisco on Friday for game number six. Billy Pierce will pitch for the Giants and more than likely Stafford, although Ralph Halk that he could make a change. He wasn't certain as yet. A 2-2 pitch. 
curveball. He hits it down the right field line. Foul. This one going back in the upper deck. Still two and two to Matty Alou. Willie Mays is in the on-deck circle. Elston Howard has moved out to the mound for a conference with Terry. He wants to be sure that they're pitching a Lou right. Matty choking the bat a little bit with two strikes on him. Waits on Ralph Terry. Here's the 2-2 pitch. Curveball outside. He pulled the string on that one. Alou was full, but it was just off the corner. Three and two. Ralph doesn't want to walk him. Put a speedster at first base with one out. So he'll be trying to come in with this 3-2 pitch. Here it is. A fly ball hit into left field. Tommy Trash is moving back. Still going back. He makes the catch. Matty Alou out on a fly ball to Trash and left center field. Two down, and here's Willie Mays. This is the real tough part of the day as far as left field is concerned the sun. And you can see Trash like the outfielders here at Yankee Stadium try to do is play the ball off to the side. Instead of looking straight ahead, they look off to the side and try to play it that way. Willie Mays standing in. He's 0 for 3 today. Terry delivers a fastball. It's inside, says Al Barlick. Howard thought he might have gone through with his swing. He checked with Barlick, who said no. One ball, no strikes. Willie right down on the end of the bat. Here's the 1-0 and pitch. He swings and misses. Oh, he had a riffle at a fastball. One ball, one strike. With no one on, we're on the top of the eighth inning. The Yankees two and the Giants two. Terry ready. Here's the one-one pitch. Curve ball. He fouls it off. One ball, two strikes. Terry got the slow curve on the outside corner. Willie was out in front. He hit it right on the end of the bat. Squibbed it off to the right. Mays is lined to left, struck out, and fly deep to center in three trips. the one-two pitch. Curveball hit hard to third. Boyer has it to throw to first. He's out. Willie Mays goes out third to first. No runs, no hits, no arrows, no one left. And the score at the end of the first half, the eighth inning. The Giants two and the Yankees two. This original 1962 World Series broadcast will continue on the NBC radio network. Let a three-time Indy 500 winner and current national driving champion tell you why he asks for Pennzoil motor oil. Hi, I'm Johnny Rutherford. We use Pennzoil in the race car for top engine protection at high speed. But in my own car, I want engine protection plus good gas mileage. That's why I'm more of a Pennzoil fan now than ever. Because Pennzoil does save gasoline. You see, Pennzoil engineers have made it even more slippery. This means there's less friction where engine metal meets engine metal. So the engine runs easier. And the easier an engine runs, the less gasoline it drinks up. Johnny Rutherford knows gas-saving Pennzoil. There's quality in every extra mile. Available in 10W30 and 10W40. America has asked for Pennzoil. America lives to try. NBC Radio Sports is presenting a classic World Series broadcast. Game 5 of 1962, featuring superstars Mickey Mantle, Roger Maris, Willie Mays, and Willie McCovey. Ralph Terry will be the leadoff man here in the bottom of the eighth inning for the Yankees. He'll be followed by Kubek and then Bobby Richardson. George, the second time in this ball game that Terry's been leading off, so Stanford is doing quite a job of getting the key man, the eighth man, that Yankee lineup because they'd like to see the pitcher lead off. The Giants would. Ralph has been to the plate twice. He struck out both times. Here's a fastball in tight. One ball, no strike. A 2-2 ball game in the bottom of the eighth inning as Sanford and Terry are dueling again. Jack checks the sign. 
is the one and no pitch. Strike. He got the fastball right down the middle. One ball, one strike. The Yankees have never been out in front in this ball game. Twice the Giants have taken the lead. Twice the Yankees have tied it. Here's a strike. Fastball at the knees. One ball and two strikes to Ralph Terry. Tony Kubek, the shortstop, is waiting in the on-deck circle. Here's the pitch. Curveball. He fouls it back. One and two to Terry. New baseball put into play by Al Barlick, the plate umpire. Sanford rubbing it up. Terry down on the end of the bat, waiting. Here's the one-two pitch. Curveball, he struck him out. Ralph Terry goes down swinging. Strikeout number 10 for Jack Sanford. There's one away, and the batter will be Tony Kubek. Tony singled in the first inning, hopped to the shortstop in the third, and struck out in the fifth. Kubek, a tall left-handed batter. Here's the pitch. Ball down low. One ball and no strikes. Davenport at third base is playing in close, and he is near the bag as Tony hits a lot of balls down the third baseline. He's playing him much as he would a right-handed batter. There's one outside. 2-0 oh to Kubek. The Giants have two runs on six hits. They've made two errors. The Yankees have two runs on three hits, and they have no errors. The Yankees have not driven in a run. One scored on a wild pitch, one on a fast ball. Here's a liner to right field, a solid base hit for Kubek. Quick throw back in by Alou to first base. Almost caught McCovey by surprise. Tony Kubek swinging on the 2-0 and pitch, lined it hard into right field. That's hit number four for the Yankees. There's a runner at first base with one out, and the batter will be Bobby Richardson. Bobby's one for three today. Safe on an air in the first inning. Popped up in the third and singled in the sixth. Davenport playing in close at third. Not going to give Bobby a chance to beat out a bun in this spot. Sanford checks his runner. Makes a quick throw to first. Two back back in time. Don Larson and Stu Miller, a couple of right-handers, are throwing in the bullpen for the Giants. Sanford gets that. Here's the pitch. Here's a ladder to left. It's in there. Hit for Bobby Richardson. Alou plays it on the first hop and throws it back in. Well, oh, the Yankees are threatening. A liner to right by Kubek, and then Bobby Richardson lined one hard to left field. Putting runners at first and second with one out. And Al Dark, the manager, has moved out of the dugout on his way to the mound. He has Don Larson. A big right-hander and Stu Miller, a right-hander, throwing in the bullpen, Joe. He's starting him in a hurry, too, George. Uh, right now, he's just uh, getting an opinion from his catcher, uh, to let Stanford in the ball game on the base to the Kubek. Stanford got behind Kubek two balls and no strike. He challenged him with the fastball. And you can certainly see here, George, the big break that the Giants got. And, of course, they worked it that way. It's just good pitching where... Terry leading off, they got him on strikes, and the Yankees have had to play station-to-station baseball since there is one out here, although Kubek and Richardson have come through. Well, Tommy Trace, the batter, he's had a double today in two official trips. Here's the pitch. Ball down low. One ball or no strike. Bobby Richardson on at first base, Tony Kubek at second with one out. We're in the bottom of the eighth inning, and it's all tied at 2-2. Sanford checks his runners. 
the pitch to Trash. He swings a long belt. This is well hit in a deep right field. Going, it's gone. A home run. bullpen as the Yankees have taken the lead here 5-2. to two. Stanford struck out 10 men. He got carried to open the inning and then Kubek on a two-ball no-strike count, single in the right field, Richardson then single the left field, and then Fresh after taking the pitch outside it, hit a low fastball into the right field seats and that's the three big runs. Stanford just standing off to the side, holding the baseball, waiting for his relief pitcher to come in. Looking down to the ninth inning for the Giants, it'll be McCovey, Philippe Ballou, and Tom Haller. And it'll be up to Stu Miller, the relief pitcher here, to hold these Yankees from scoring any more runs. They lead by three on a home run by Tom Trish. Stanford gives the ball to Miller. He'll get a tremendous hand. a tremendous round of applause as he leaves the mound and it is a well-deserved round of applause because this fellow has been a tremendous pitcher in this World Series. He seemed to be laboring a little here in the last couple of innings. He gave up a couple of hard singles after the first batter had been retired here in the eighth inning to Quebec and Richardson and then Tommy Trash picked on a low fastball and drove it deep into the lower deck in right field and the Giants trailing the Yankees for the first time in this ball game. It's a 5-2 game. Stu Miller, a right-hander, coming on to do the pitching. Stu will pitch much as Ralph Carey does, except he will throw more slow pitches. As Joe has told you many times, he throws slow, slow, and then slower. So on the scoreboard, the Yankees have five runs on six hits and no errors. The Giants have two runs on six hits, and they've made two errors. Mickey Mantle will be the first batter to face Stu Miller and then Roger Maris. The Giants went out in front in the third inning, one to nothing. The Yankees tied it in the fourth, 1-1. One, one. Then the Giants moved in front on Pagan's home run in the fifth. And the Yankees tied it in the sixth, 2-2. Two, two, and that's the way the score stood until Tommy Trash slammed one into the right field seat with two on here in the eighth inning. Now we're ready to go. Miller completes his warm-up toss. Mickey Mantle steps in. Mickey's 0 for 2 officially in this ball game. Safe on an error in the first inning, walked in the fourth and bounce to the second baseman in the sixth inning. Miller into the windup, and here's the pitch to Mantle. Ball, it's down low. One ball and a strike. Tommy Trash, his home run was his second hit in this game. He had a double back in the fourth inning. There's a curve up high. Two and oh to Mantle. In the bottom of the eighth inning, there's one out with no one on. The Yankees have taken a 5-2 lead. Mickey Mantle standing in with a ball two and a no-strike count. The pitch, he swings and hits the bouncer to second. Chuck Keller has it. Oh, he's going to throw to first. He held it for just a moment and flipped it over to McCovey. There's two down, and the batter will be Roger Maris. Hodge is 0 for 3 in this game. He tried to left field in the first, bounced to the first baseman in the fourth, and bounced to Hiller at second base in the sixth inning. 
Miller gets ready. Here's the pitch to Maris. Curve ball down low. One ball and no strike. Five to two, the Yankees lead. We're in the bottom of the eighth inning here in the fifth game of the 1962 World Series. Tomorrow's an off day. On Friday, game number six will be played at Candlestick Park in San Francisco. And game number seven will be played on Saturday if necessary. There's one inside, just off the corner. Ball two and no strike. George, just checking my score sheet. The first three hitters in the Yankee lineup got all the hits off Jack Sanford. I haven't checked that, Joe. Miller gets ready. Here's the 2-0 pitch. Inside, a slow curve ball breaking down and in. Ball three and no strike. Well, if you want to pick out a ball player that's having quite a series, Joe, how about this Tommy Trash? He's been a key man for the Yankees every day. Today with the double and then scored in the fourth and the eighth at the home run, he's leading in base hit. There's a 3-0 and o pitch to Maris. He swings and fouls it back. 3-1 and one to Raj. Stu Miller pitching in relief of Jack Stanford, who started this game for the Giants. Stu taking a little time as he looks in. Here's the pitch to Maris. He swings and misses. That was a change of pace. Rod thought he had it time. He still wasn't there, Joe. And you'll do that against this Miller. Trish has eight base hits and Pagan has seven. Two leaders. A little bit of a surprise. Here's a 3-2 pitch. A ground ball foul down the first baseline. Still three and two. Ralph Terry started this inning by striking out. Kubek then single to right field. Bobby Richardson lined a single to left. Tom Trish hit a 1-0 pitch into the right field seats for a three-run homer. That brought on Mickey Mantle batting against Stu Miller. And Mantle bounced to the second baseman. Now Roger Maris batting with a ball three and a strike two count. Miller into the windup. Here it is. Down low, he walked him. Maris draws the walk. So the Yankees have a runner at first base with two outs. And the batter will be Elston Howard. Howard in Candlestick Park just made up his mind that he was going to wait and kind of hit flat-footed and hit the ball into right field. And it was a bad curveball, but he singled against Miller in San Francisco as he went to the opposite field, which is the way hitters like to bat against Miller. If they can, sometimes you just can't hold that bat back long enough. Well, he's 0 for 3 in this game. Struck out twice and bounced to the shortstop against Sanford. Here's the first pitch. Curve down low. One ball, no strike. 5 to 2, the Yankees lead. We're in the bottom of the eighth inning. Roger Maris is on at first base with two outs. The Yankees have scored three times here in the eighth inning. Here's the pitch. A swing and a miss on a curve. One ball, one strike. Miller gets set. Here's the 1-1 pitch. Ball down low. Stu coming in with the fastball too low. Ball two and strike one. The sun completely gone here at Yankee Stadium. Cloudy and overcast right now. Here's the 2-1 pitch. Outside. Trying to get the corner with a fastball. 3-1 and one to Howard. Kelly is checking with Crossetti at third base. No doubt the hit sign is on if he likes this pitch. Roger Maris at first base with two outs. The pitch to Howard. He swings and fouls it back. This one's on the screen. Three and two to Alley. That means that Maris at first base will be moving on this pitch. Three, two, and two out. Miller gets set. Here's the pitch. There's a fly ball in the center field. Mays coming on. He's there. Makes the catch. Elston Howard flies to center. The Yankees pick up three runs on three hits. No errors, one man left. And the score at the end of eight. The Yankees five and the Giants two. We'll be back with more exciting action from the fifth game of the 1962 World Series after this. The Bell System presents Miss Ella Fitzgerald. 
talk to the children. Talk to the children. Share a little secret. Share a little laugh. Growing up so far away. Growing up so fast. Talk to the children. Reach out. Reach out and touch someone. You're crying so loud. I just got my tubular. Talk to the children. Staying close is easy and it feels so good. Talk to the children. Reach out, reach out and touch someone. Wherever you are, you're never too far from little people who want to hear you. Reach out, reach out and touch someone. And now, more action from Game 5 of the 1962 World Series. Well, it's the top of the ninth inning, and the Yankees are out in front by a score of 5-2. to two. It'll be Willie McCovey to lead off for San Francisco. He'll be followed by Philippe Lou and then Tom Haller. McCovey's 0 for 3, struck out in the second inning, bounced to the second baseman in the fourth, and fly to right field in the sixth inning. Two left-handers throwing in the bullpen for the Yankees, Luis Arroyo and Bud Daly. Willie McCovey, a big left-handed batter, waiting on Ralph Terry. Here's the first pitch. Fastball, he foul tips it out of the middle of Howard. One strike. Well, the Yankees broke a 2-2 tie in the bottom of the eighth inning, picking up three runs on a homer by Tommy Trace with two mates aboard. The hits are all even, six apiece. The Giants have made two errors. Here's a curve hit hard up the middle into center field. Willie McCovey slammed a ground ball into center field. And the Giants have a runner at first base with no one out. Philippe Alou, the left fielder. Philippe's had a double and a single in three trips today. Terry checks his runner. Here's the pitch. Strike. Fastball around the knees. The Yankees five, the Giants two. We're in the ninth inning. The Giants have a runner at first base with no one out. Philippe Ballou waiting on Ralph Terry. There's the one strike pitch. Fastball, he swings and misses. Strike two. Scourin is playing about a step or two behind McCovey at first base. They do not figure McCovey to be running, but he doesn't want to give him a big jump either so he could break up the double play. Here's the pitch. A swing and a miss. He struck him out. Terry threw the fastball by Ballou. Strike out number seven for Ralph. In case you missed the attendance today, it's 63,165. 63,165. Here's Tom Haller, the catcher. Tommy's 0 for 3 in this ball game. Terry gets set. The pitch. Strike. He got a slow curveball over. A one strike count to Haller. Scourin has moved back a step or two farther with a left handed batter than he did against the right hander, Alou. Here's the one strike pitch. Fastball. It's inside. One and one to Haller. George Ed Bailey has come out of the uh, giant bullpen. He's come into the bench, so he'll probably be the pinch hitter for Pagan. Terry taking the long look in. Here's the 1-1 pitch. Pass ball down low. He got this one over the plate, but too low. Ball two and strike one. Haller wants to have a look at the baseball. Al Barley hollers out to Terry, who tosses it in. McCovey opened this inning with a single to center field. Alou then struck out. Now, Haller, the catcher, batting with a ball two and a strike one count. 
The Yankees lead by three here in the ninth inning. Here's the pitch. Strike two. He gets the fastball over. Howler might have been looking for the curve. He was not ready as Terry blazed the fastball by him. The count is even at two and two. Ralph gets set. Here's the pitch. Curve. It's up high. Three and two to Howler. Scouring at first base is playing close to McCovey. Then as Terry delivers the ball, he races back about four or five steps. He wants all the protection he can get against the left-handed batter. Three and two to Tom Haller. Terry gets set. Here's the pitch. Foul ball. This one coming back in the press box. Still three and two. He's just matching his strength against Haller's strength now. He didn't want to walk him and get that tie and run up at the plate. Ed Bailey has already come out, a left-handed pull hitter. And so with a 3-2 count, Terry read it back and fired the fastball strike. He was a bit disgusted when he missed with the 2-2 curveball and ran the count full. Tom Heller, a big left-handed batter, waiting. Terry gets set. Here's the pitch. Fly ball hit into center field. Matt will have a long way to go. He's racing. He can't get it. It gets by him. Heller on his way to second. McCovey is being waved in. Here's the throw. It's going to be held up. can really change it because they're away from that double play situation. That's a big base hit by Tom Haller and Pagan, who's been a tough hitter, can hit now. Joe, that ball was hit into almost straightaway center field, but Mantle was playing far over into right center, playing Haller to pull all the way. He made a long run after, but he couldn't get it. A two-base hit for Haller. McCovey comes in to score it five to three. Here's Jose Pagan. He swings and misses on a curveball. One strike to Pagan. To three, the Yankees lead. The Giants have a runner at second base with one out. Terry got the ball on the outside part of the plate to Holler. Kept him from pulling it, but Mantle is playing far over into right center. He had no chance to get it. Here's the pitch. Curve. It's in the dirt. Nice pickup by Elson Howard. One ball, one strike. Pagan out of the box for a moment. Taking a little time before he gets back in. The Giants have worked the tying run to the plate. Here's the 1-1 pitch. A ground ball to the shortstop. Kubek has it. Here's the flip to first. He's out. Pagan goes out. Starts the first. And Joe, you hit it right on the button when they got out of the double play because there was a tailor-made double play ground ball right there. The big base that Haller picked up uh, looked like a high fly ball when it started out, George, and, but he knew it was going to be trouble for Mantle because he was way over in right center. In fact, he's in the same spot right now for Ed Bailey, who's coming up as a pinch hitter as he was for Haller. And you measure it by the 407 foot mark. He's just a little bit to the left of the marker as we look out. Ed Bailey will come on to bat for Miller here in the ninth inning. He represents the last hope. Or the Giants, unless he can get on. Of course, Bailey's up there to do one thing. Howard knows that. Terry knows it. Everybody knows it. He wants to hit it as far and as hard as he possibly can. He's the time run. He's got to go for the long ball. The Yankees lead by two here in the ninth inning. The Giants have a runner at second base with two outs. Ed Bailey, a big left-handed batter. Here's the pitch. He swings and bounces it foul down the first baseline strike to Bailey. Ed had a home run in the ball game out here on Sunday against Stafford in the ninth inning. A one strike count is Terry taking a lot of time here in the ninth inning. He is one out away from his first World Series victory. 
looks in, and as he gets ready, Bailey steps out. Giants have out hit the Yankees eight to six, but they trail five to three. Here's the pitch. Ball, it's down low. One ball, one strike. I believe Bailey wants to have a look at the ball. Al Barlick signaling to Ralph Terry. He's going to put a new one into play. McCovey opened this inning with a single. Palou struck out. Tom Haller doubled to center, driving in McCovey. And Pagan bounced to the shortstop for out number two. Now Ed Bailey, the batter, with a one ball, one strike count. The pitch to Bailey. Ball inside. A ball two and a strike one count. Ralph was trying to hit the inside corner with that fastball. Got it a little bit too close to Bailey. That again, the pitch, slow curve, he hits it deep to right, Maris going back, he's there, and he's got it. Bailey lined the ball hard to right field, one run on two hits in the inning, no errors, one man left, the final score of the game, the Yankees five, the Giants three. Well, Joe, quite a ball game here today, and the Yankees have taken a three to two edge as we move on to Candlestick Park. Yes, it was, a real big ball game for the Yankees to win, and now they have Stafford and Ford ready for the sixth game. Manager Ralph Hoff will announce that at the workout tomorrow. Both ball clubs working out at Candlestick. And our producer this afternoon has been Len Dillon. Our engineer has been Harry Alexander. And now this is Joe Garagiola reminding you once again that the final score today was New York Yankees 5 and the San Francisco Giants 3.